Paul Okpo. Mm -hmm. yeah, this is Daniel. Shagun. Paul, are you there? Okay, oh, Daniel, how are you? I'm good, and you? I'm very well, thank you. My light is good, Abby. Yes, it is. Okay, yeah. I want to do something. Just yeah. look at my face, because if I'm reading, one. so it, the position of my camera is okay, because I'm going to be reading from my happened? screen. We went back. All right, so Daniel. That, yes, please. Yeah, so look, so look, I'm, I'm reading something on my screen. Can you see it? So good morning, everyone. I hope you're doing well and keeping safe. That's fine, that's fine. That's fine, okay. All right, good morning, everyone. I see four people are joining already. We start in 10 minutes. You're welcome. All right, good evening, everyone. If you're just joining us, welcome to the Virtual Youth Conference by Leap Africa. Um, we'll be starting. Okay.
We're starting shortly. Welcome. If you can hear me clearly, please using the chat box, can you see big yes? If you can hear me clearly using the chat box, can you say yes? If you can hear me clearly using the chat box, can you say yes? I want to know. If you can hear me clearly using the chat box, can you say yes? Fantastic. I see hello, I see comfort. Fantastic. Welcome, people. Awesome, 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 awesome. Beautiful. Welcome, everyone. You're welcome. We'll be starting shortly, so I'll just play some music in the background to just keep some vibing going on. Um, Good morning, everyone. My name is Daniel Emino. I'm a program coordinator at Leap Africa. Good morning, everyone. Trust you are having a good day. You're welcome to the virtual youth conference. Welcome, everyone. Welcome, everyone. Welcome, everyone. Um, so with me here, I have Shengo Alimi, our programs manager, and we have one of our facilitators already here, um, ready to take us in, in this session. All right, just to start, please. If you can hear me clearly on the chat, I see we have about 20 people um, in house right now. 
If you can hear me clearly in the house, I want you to use it, indicate in the chat box um, with the state you're calling from. Just say yes, Daniel, yes, um, yes, Wari, yes, Abuja, yes, Kafanshan, wherever you're calling from, we'd like to know in the chat. Let us know in the chat where you're joining from. Okay, I see Lagos. I see, um, okay, all right. I see Lagos, I see um, Benin, I see Ogun, I see McCordy. Let me know in the chat box, let me know in the chat, let me know in the chat. Awesome, awesome. I see Abuja, awesome. Um, so Paul, um, Paul, um, Leap Africa, please uh, make, give Molade Sharon Wright to share a screen. She needs Sharon Wright to share a screen. All right, people, let me see, let me see. Can I see more people do that? Can I see more people do that? Can I see more people do that? Awesome, awesome. I see Lagos. I see Lagos. Anyone from America? Anyone from Japan? Anyone from New York City? I don't want to see more people. We have 24 people in there. I see Ocean State. Fantastic. All right. So welcome to the Virtual Youth Conference Leap. Africa. Now, one of the purpose of this conference, Daniel, oh, I see my name, my name sick. He said from Nasarawa. <laughs> awesome. All right. All right. All right. All right. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Leap Africa Virtual Conference. So, my, like I said earlier, my name is Daniel Emeno. I'm um, one of the staff of Leap Africa, Leap Africa and I'll be moderating this um, session very quickly. All right. Just give me a second. I uh, just want to pull up um, a document. All right. So I'd like to see more people. Tell me, tell me where you're calling from. Tell me where you're calling from. I'd like to see more people share. I'd like to see more people share. Where are you calling from? Where are you calling from? Where are you calling from? Where are you joining in from? All right. Awesome. Okay. So to take us further, without further ado, just to take us further in, in this session, I'm going to invite our um, program manager, Shego Alimi. Um, is going to just give us a welcome address and we go in straight. All right, over to you, Shagun. Thank you for that. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, Daniel. Good morning, everyone. Um, Good morning. Daniel, can you hear me? Am I audible? Yes, you are. We can hear you clearly. All right. Fantastic. Um, so good morning, everyone, um, and welcome. Hope you're doing very well and keeping safe. Um, all protocols duly observed. Um, like Daniel said, my name is Olusha Gwanlimi. I'm the programs manager here at Leap Africa. And um, it's definitely an honor to be delivering this welcome address today. On behalf of the board and management of Leap Africa, I would like to specially welcome you to our virtual youth conference. And I say that and I pause hearing the imaginary excitement and the energy in the room, like it would typically happen in a physical convening. Um, very interesting times we are in, I must say. Um, what a year this has been. Um, some days ago, I heard an analogy that says 2020 is like looking left and right when you want to cross the road and getting hit by an airplane. 2020 has indeed been a lot. The enormous uncertainty in the air also presents us as individuals, organizations, and a nation the opportunity to take a step back and do things right again. Because clearly we can see and we can all attest that our old ways of doing things clearly did not work. And now we have a chance to make our future one we truly would be proud of. Leap Africa is a youth-focused development organization and we've been on a mission to raise a new cadre of leaders by inspiring, empowering, and equipping these young leaders with the skills and tools for personal, organizational, and community transformation. So simply put, we are on a mission to raise leaders that will transform Africa. We understand the importance of building ecosystems and facilitating important convenience around our very important and ever-growing youth capital to ensure our youth remain motivated and very productive. This conference has been intentionally curated 
at such a time as this to provide hope for uncertainty, direction for the lack of clarity, and guidance to unseen pathways. We have a lineup of excellent speakers from diverse works of life who have been where you currently are and have achieved success today. Without bombs and potholes on that journey. And they're here today to tell you that you are possible. As your service to the nation winds down, what an interesting time to emerge, what an interesting time to arrive. And what a time you might say and wonder. And the right time, I would say. Beautiful thing about uncertainty, which is laced with doubt and confusion, is that it can lead to the best story of your life. But it's up to you. It's up to you to take ownership of your life, wake up and go after your dreams. It's up to you to work hard, commit to personal development and be a lifelong learner. Hard work trumps talent that doesn't work hard. There will be ups and downs. It's up to you to let your challenges motivate you, use your rage for, rage for positive change and see the positive in every situation. You might not be offered a seat at the table. It is up to you to make your own table. It is up to you to live a values-based life, values of integrity, excellence, respect, fairness, discipline, and honesty. Those are some values that should guide you. And, you know, when I think about it, you can do this. You're enough. I've had the opportunity to interact with a lot of young people in Nigeria, and they're so passionate and intelligent. And I'm very confident that as you channel your agency, make your voice heard and let your creativity be felt in Nigeria. Africa, the world, will all definitely be the better for it. On your journey to greatness, here are some nuggets I believe will be very useful for you. Playing small does not serve your world. Always think and act big. A bad day is not a bad life. Trust your journey. You are a community. Support each other. Collaborate with each other. Someone is always watching. Remain consistent to your dreams. It's okay to make mistakes. Be your own cheerleader. Be confident in yourself. Your time is your greatest resource. Use it wisely. You either succeed or you learn. Take chances. My charge to us all today is to continue to grow. It is okay to be a continuous work in progress. As you get better and begin to do better, it is your responsibility, my responsibility, our responsibility to help another person, help another community, and help another nation. As we all go about creating pathways to progress, our dear nation, Nigeria, will be left with no choice but to play catch up. Welcome once again. Have an insightful and engaging time. And thank you very much for spending your Saturday with us. Welcome. Awesome. Thank you for that, Shagun. In the chat box, can I see a round of applause for your emojis? Uh, can I see a round of applause? Somebody say clap on the chat box. I, 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 I can't. I can let, let me see the claps on the spirits, on the chats, on the chats. We have for the three people now, we're expecting more people, but can I see some noise in the chat box? Awesome, I see Michael, I see Chioma, I see Ulua Dara, I see Caleb, I see Ebuka. Clap, 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 clap. Awesome. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Let me know in the chat box. Are you ready to learn? What is the theme of this session today? What's the theme of this session today? Reinvention, reinvention, reinvention. Can you hear yeah, somebody say reinvention on the chat box? Somebody say reinvention. Are you ready to reinvent yourself? Are you ready to learn skills that will make you relevant in the workplace? Are you ready to position yourself for the opportunities coming your way? Are you ready to understand the gaps? You know, they say life is where are you right now? Where do you want to go? And what are the skills that will get you there? Are you ready? Are you ready? Somebody say reinvention. Let me see you say reinvention. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, well, without further ado, we are in for a great time. We're in for an amazing time. We're in for a fantastic time. 
This is the time you're going to learn. You're going to relearn and you're going to relearn. See, COVID, it did not happen to you, to you. It happened for you. It happened for you. Say, COVID did not happen to you. COVID-19 happened for you. Right? Because when it happened, this is the time you're not learning things that will make you better. These are the times that you learn things that will make you better. So when people are crying, when people are, 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 are crying, you're going to be rejoicing because you're going to learn things that will make you outstanding and position you for greatness. All right. Without further ado, our first speaker is going to start now. She's going to speak on upskilling for the world of work, and she's an amazing person. She's an amazing person. Amazing, and you're in for a great time. Who is she? She's a highly motivated and experienced business manager with extensive research, um, experience in delivering various multifunctional projects from HR to B2C and business transformation. She's a social entrepreneur with a focus on youth unemployment across Africa and particular experience in Nigeria. Um, she has done amazing work with the government to educators, to employers in policy making, and she's experienced in, in, in the whole the employment and unemployment ecosystem in Nigeria. Ladies and gentlemen, with a round of applause, please welcome all the way from wherever she is right now, the Lagos, Please welcome the Chief Executive Officer of WAVE West Africa Vocational Education. Her name is Molade Adeni. Come on, let me see a round of applause on the chat. See, I should look so beautiful on this call today. Good welcome. morning. Good morning. Please confirm welcome. that you can hear me loud and clear. We can hear you loud and clear. You're welcome. Over awesome. to you. Awesome. Awesome. Great. Thank welcome. you so much. Yes. Good morning. Good morning, Daniel. Good to see you. Uh, good morning, everybody. Welcome to all the participants. Um, I'm going to be having a very, very short conversation. And then, you know... Molade, just give me a minute, please. Give me a minute, sure. please. Yeah, I see um, Lola just joined us. So Lola is um, from City. Okay. City Foundation. Um, City Bank, uh, we're presenting City Foundation. So she's just going to give us um, a very short remark, um, a very short opening remark as we move on. Good morning, Lola. Please, can you hear me, please? Yes, I can. Good morning. Good morning. Apologies for joining this. I had a bit of a technical That's issue. Right. Good to see you. Are. Same here. How's it going? It's very well. Hi, Molade. No, since you'd already started with Molade, I think all protocols observed. Okay. Um, Good morning. I will follow. No, no, carry on. I mean, I think you were meant to do a quick opening. Uh, yes. So that's fine. <laughs> Okay. Um, good morning, everybody. Um, as um, Daniel rightly said, my name is Lola Oyeka. I work um, with uh, Citibank, um, and City Foundation is um, one of the entities in which um, is affiliated with City. They handle a lot of our community projects, and iLead is one of such um, um, projects. We've been a long time part of Leap Africa, and we're very proud, you know. Sorry. Somebody asking a question? No, no, you can go on. Sorry. Okay. Um, so we're very uh, proud of um, our, our partnership with, um, with Leap Africa. And first of all, I'd also like to congratulate, is it Kopashon? Do we still say that? At all the youth <laughs> coppers. Um, you do, know, at all of that. I did mine uh, how many years ago? I won't tell you so you don't guess my age, but I am young, you know, and all of that. Um, bear with me a second. I'm just trying to put my phone on silent before it rings out, um, as was the case just now. Um, but just to give an overview, um, basically of what um, City is. So City is a financial institution. Um, it's a bank. Um, it's a global bank with its roots in the U.S. Um, it's been around for over 200 years. We've been in Nigeria for over three decades. We're the oldest international bank. Um, and what we do through our foundation is to promote economic progress um, to improve the lives of people in low-income communities. And one of the key um, stakeholders of that progress are, you know, our young people, our youth. Um, and so um, with the ILEAD program, um, it's very aligned with um, um, City's mantra, which is partners in progress, um, because you all are partners in progress. And I'm trying not to make this um, long-winded or too scripted um, because my role really was just to encourage and applaud you and to sort of give you some, if you like, talking or well, guidance as the case may be. Um, so obviously the whole essence of our service here, despite uh, um, the various um, schools of thought around it was really what to be able to bring us together as a nation 
um, and to also give us an opportunity to give back. Um, and so congratulations and thank you very much for completing your service here. The next step is as exciting as it is daunting. Um, and you will find that your experiences will be different. For some of you, you know, you may get an instant job. For some of you, it may take time. But as you know, it's popularly said, and you know, I think of a, a message a mentor of mine once says, he said, you know, no opportunity is lost. Um, and there's always, you know, teachable moments in life. So if you're one of the fortunate ones, for instance, who's able to get, you know, um, a job or, you know, um, a project going right now, then again, congratulations to you. Um, everything you will experience at this point in time um, is for your good and it will add value and make you even more rounded as a person. Um, I remember when I started, uh, you know, we all sort of come in expecting to be given at the very minimum administrative jobs. And I remember my first job as a youth copper was to make our then Oga coffee. The thing upset me. I thought I'd been to school, you know, I've worked hard, I did this NYSC and all of that. And my job is to make coffee. What happened to his two hands? The truth of the matter is that coffee making experience was his way of testing to see if I give you a job, will you be able to do it and will you do it with excellence? And so I actually developed a reputation amongst the ogres because I used to make the best cups of coffee or tea. And that was because he was teaching me the importance of having standards. It will also test to see what you're willing to do. And everybody has to have a standard. You know, do not compromise because believe you me, you will have, you will meet different ogres. I wish I could tell you that, oh, your first boss will love you and hug you and, you know, motivate you. Truth be told, um, we don't know what you will get. But, you know, as a prophet, as Beyonce likes to say, you know, you make lemons or lemonade out of lemons. And so if it is that you are told to make coffee, you will make that coffee, you know, like that coffee would generate revenue for the organization. If it is to photocopy, you will make sure that the quality of that copy, everything is so straight that it will be the best photocopy that we've seen. Now, the truth is there are those of us who will get work. There are those of us who may not. Now, it can be frustrating. It can be disheartening. But the perspective I want you to look at is where you are, somebody else is looking at you and wishing they were you. Um, and that's the truth. There's always somebody aspiring to somebody and you are no different. But take the opportunity to say, okay, between when I'm looking for work, you know, are there opportunities to acquire new skills? And I mean, there are all sorts of resources, especially, you know, we are in a digital age. The COVID-19, as frustrating as it is, has created different opportunities to develop oneself. You know, um, I encourage people to journal. You know, I've been doing a lot of that myself. Because the good thing about journaling is as you progress, you know, especially on those days where you're frustrated or you want to be able to say, look, how far have I come? As you read, you'll be able to see your journey. It's a chronicle of your journey thus far. Um, and don't be disheartened. And if you have an off day, it's okay. We all allow our off days, right? Just dust yourself up and keep trying. Perseverance is key, right? Now, what you need to also look at it is you may have different, you know, interview opportunities. Learn the lessons. I encourage you to ask your mentors and leverage on the network that LEAP has. Um, a classic example um, for those of you, if you have not or are yet to or may have had, is the first interview question that everybody asks is what? Tell us a bit about yourself. Please, they're not looking for your family tree. Okay? They want to know who you are, the skills that you have, your academic background. This is an opportunity to basically expatiate on what you have on your CV. These are just some of the basic skills. And I've been told I have one minute by Auntie Aisha Usman. And so for those of you who, you know, choose to follow the entrepreneurial routes, this is the time to really focus on your business plan. Okay. What is it? What value am I bringing? Do not be discouraged and say, oh, there's so many people doing what I'm doing. Even if you're a makeup artist, you know, and you know, I mean, the industry is booming, right? There's something that you bring to the table. And so I'm probably on my 30 seconds. I wish you all the best of luck. Um, please, please, please leverage on your, the leap support. And I will hand over to, I guess, is it back to Daniel um, to continue and then over to Maladi. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you so much, Lola. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So Lola is a country head of public affairs for Nigeria and Ghana at City. And City Foundation is one of the, is, is the core, is the main funder for, is the funder actually 
for those programs. So please, a round of applause for Lala and the chat box. That was a very, um, I learned a lot. I learned a lot from that just short introduction. Um, um, talking about whatever you, your hands find to do, do it with all your heart, do it with all your mind, do it excellently well. Even if it's coffee, you're saving, save coffee well. If it's photocopying, you're doing, do it well, and you grow up the ladder in your career. A round of applause for Lola for that. If you have a business, she said, start now, start now, eat that frog, do it now. Somebody say, do it now on the chat box, do it now. Do it now, do it now, offer value. Awesome. Thank you so much, Lola, for that. Um, inspiring open remark. All right, people, guess what? We have a lot of people who are joining now. Get ready, get ready, get your pen, put distractions away. You're in for a good time. All right. So earlier, I invited and welcomed our first, you know, um, speaker for today. So I'm going to do that again. Ladies and gentlemen, with a round of applause, please welcome Molade Adini to take us on the first class. Over to you, Molade. Thank you. You're welcome once again. Good sleep. Great. Right. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. Um, yes. Confirm you can hear me again? Just thumbs yes, up? Yes, I can. Hear everyone? Yeah, I can. Great. Yeah. Awesome. So thank you again to the Leap Africa team for having me um, this morning. And a big congratulations, just as Lola has said, to all the um, NYSC coppers um, who have just, or they're not called coppers anymore. You are, you are passed out. Um, I hope it was an amazing experience. Um, Again, I won't say when I did mine, so I don't give away my age, just, like, just as Lola said. But we're going to have an amazing conversation this morning, and I really want to make it a conversation as opposed to me talking. Um, everything that I'm going to be sharing are some of the things that we have learned over the last, um, over the last you know, few months around the world of work, but more importantly, over the last seven years um, of WAVE. So um, I work with an organization called WAVE. Um, I like to call myself the chief servant at WAVE. Um, WAVE stands for West Africa Vocational Education. At WAVE, we um, upskill young people aged 18 to 35 on job-ready skills, mostly soft skills, and we connect them with entry-level work. Um, like I said, we've been doing that for seven years, and we have successfully, you know, directly trained over 3,500 young people and connected approximately 50% of them to work while others go find work on their own. So I'm really looking forward to sort of having this conversation. I have a short presentation. But I wanted to just ask all the participants this morning, um, just as Lola was, um, was talking and she was sharing about some people will find work, some people will not find work, what's going to happen with life after NYC. I would like to ask very quickly, and I'm looking in the chat box to see the responses, what are you most concerned about now that you have passed out, now that you, you have now been unleashed in, you know, into the world of work, what are your, what are your um, okay, some of you are some of you are still serving coppers. Okay, the question is still very valid. Um, so, what are your what are your fears? What are your concerns about work um, now? Maybe before before COVID, even now post COVID. Let 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 me read some of your comments. What are you most anxious about? Uh, what are you most um, concerned about? So I'm just waiting to see. Okay, you can't hear me clearly. Somebody says. Um, Please let me know. I'm trying to do the best to make sure that my volume is, is good. So some, okay, I'm, I'm seeing the comments. Thank you very much. So I hear what the future holds for me, being of use to the society, experience. Um, I would ask, who said experience? Elizabeth Tayu. Please expand, shake just a little bit. Someone is scared about marriage. We're talking about work. Um, don't be scared about marriage. Trust me, it, it's beautiful when it comes, but don't worry about it. Um, so what's next? Opportunities are now getting slimmer, says um, Okweolua. Most jobs going extinct, okay? If I'm going to get a job, very, very valid point. Um, most concerned about not getting a job in time. For me, I'll say life after the whole COVID thing. I'm more con concerned about where. Okay, lo I love, I love, I love all of these, um, all of these comments. And they're very valid and they're very true. So permit me to just share my screen very quickly. And we'll run through um, the, the presentation. Thumbs up if you can see my screen. That would be super helpful for me so that I know that I am carrying everybody along. And I still see all of the comments coming in, so thank you for that. Um, if I'm going to get a job, life after service, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so this morning we're going to hopefully address some of these things, and I will. Hopefully by the end of today, let you know that those fears are valid, but 
they shouldn't be what stops you um, from moving up and upskilling for the future. So I'll be speaking around upskilling for the future. And I, I think even before COVID, we've always used this term about upskilling. What does it mean? Um, the reality is there's some statistics that I think you know, are very important that we need to even start from as, um, as, as background. So Africa has the youngest population in the world um, and Nigeria being the most popular. You know, it says that 60% of the African population is actually young people aged between 18 and 24. And that's where majority of us um, fall in. That means that there's a, you know, a, a bulging young population in the continent of Africa. The last unemployment result released by the Nigeria Bureau of Statistics ranks Nigeria 21st amongst 181 countries with an employment rate of 23.1. So when I say 21, it's not 21 from, from good, it's 21. Uh, from the West. Um, and Nigeria has also been rated as the poverty capital of the world with an estimated 87 million people living on less than $2 a day threshold. So yes, your fears are very valid, especially when you see these statistics, you begin to ask yourself, oh my gosh, this is the reality. How do I stand out? Somebody said jobs are not, there are not that many jobs out there. How do I stand out? We're all vying for you know, a few um, numbers of jobs. So these are facts. And then COVID-19 hit. So this was even before COVID-19. Before COVID-19, these um, issues were already, were already there. Then COVID-19 hit, and COVID-19 hit the whole world. And this novel coronavirus that nobody really understood or still maybe even understands has led to massive disruptions globally in every single sector that you can imagine. I don't know that, um, yes, some people have pushed through, but everybody has felt a little bit of pinch, and, and they've had to adjust um, quite rapidly. And the pandemic will forever change the face of work. It will forever change the way that we work. There are organizations who have said, we never work from home. Working from home is not a policy that we have, but the pandemic has forced us to move that way. Um, now there are organizations, there are people whose businesses thrive on them moving from one place to another, either between states or even between countries. But because of the pandemic, we've had to adapt and we've had to adapt very, very quickly. I think one of the people, one of the set of people who may not have been able to catch up would have been the, the people who did not embrace technology. Um, I, I attended a conference sometime in September last year, and we were talking about the fourth industrial revolution. And I remember speaking with a bunch of, of people from Nigeria. They were saying, ah, Nigeria, we're not even in second industrial revolution. Talk less of the fourth industrial revolution. Because if they start talking about things like machine learning, AI, robotics, et cetera, et cetera. The reality is the pandemic has actually forced us um, to start thinking, um, thinking that way. So in some ways, it's, it's, a, it's a terrible um, disease, it's a terrible illness, but it has forced countries, businesses, organizations to start thinking differently about how they are hired, what they hire for, and it means that us as, as, as the pool of, of workforce, we also need to be thinking um, the same way as well. Um, I attended the seminar, and, and thank you to the AFRI Invest team for sharing this with me. When we were looking at what the impact of in different sectors. So identify yourself with one of these. You know, a lot of us have disciplines that we've studied either as OMD, HND, um, at university level. And this is showing what the impact of COVID has been. Um, some businesses completely had to shut down. But in the midst of that, I think what is interesting is there are businesses who I like to, I mean, I can call them pandemic proof. So we know about ICT, uh, we know about food. If you were doing anything with food this season, you were making money. I know of, of, of people who had nothing to do with food. There's a makeup artist I know, um, but before long, she started cooking meals. She started cooking meals and packaging it and selling it and making money um, in, in, in this season. So therein lies opportunities. And rather than, as we go further into this discussion and conversation, I want you to think, rather than wallow in the fact that things are not working, my industry is about to shut down, you need to ask yourself, where are those opportunities, even in the midst um, of this crisis? Now, what is upskilling? Um, upskilling is a process of learning new skills that will help you thrive on your job and help you become more efficient. Upskilling kind of means that there is skills that you need that you don't have right now. So, I mean, we have an education system in Nigeria that may not be exactly where we need it to be. Um, there are many things that are taught, we're very technical, um, I mean, I'm a product of that education system. And, you know, our, our lecturers are very, very knowledgeable. 
but there's just some little little work things, um, some things that make you job ready that we aren't necessarily taught and they are extremely important. So this is a poll that I got from, um, it was from a PwC article, which says that 31% of youth said that skills and training offered to them didn't match their career aspirations. Now, if you think that that applies to you, can you just put a yes, 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 in, in or no, 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 no. So if you think that 31, that, you know, the skills and training offered does not match your career aspirations, please let me know. Okay, I can see the yeses coming, coming through. I can see the yeses coming through. 71% um, of 71 million young people worldwide are unemployed. We already mentioned that. Now, 20 to 40% of the jobs currently held by 16 to 24 year olds may be automated by the new 2030. I think it's even sooner than that now. But somebody mentioned that earlier and talked about jobs that are going extinct. Um, and then 74% of CEOs are concerned about, their about the availability of key skills to grow their businesses. So I'm gonna move straight on to the next slide because I wanted to talk about what those key skills are. So let's use an accountant as an example. Let's say I studied accounting, I studied bookkeeping, um, I'm great at my numbers, um, I, can, I can balance any sheets, don't worry, I can do any of that. But if I don't have some certain skills that are required to help me thrive on my job and to help me move, you know, uh, my productivity level high, help my employer, you know, grow their business. And I'm sure, you know, um, many sort of people on here who hire labor, these are some of the things that employers complain about. When we connect people at Wave with jobs, um, a lot of the things that, you know, the employers tell us, is that this person, I can see that this person has, a, has you know, finished with the first class, this person finished with the second class, but this person is just not able to communicate. Their written communication is poor. Their spoken communication is poor. And, and I love this human skills matrix, which basically just looks at, you know, all of those soft skills, 21st century job ready skills that are required. And these are the things that sometimes our education system fails to tell us. Now, I don't know if things are different now, um, okay, I keep hearing a few, I can't hear you. I don't want to keep talking. If, just wanted to be sure whether it is mine. Daniel, can you let me know if there's something wrong with my sound? Because I see uh, a few, I can't hear you, I can't hear you. We can hear you clearly, probably the network. Oh. So. Okay, okay, all right, all right, just checking. So if you can't hear me, please check your network. Um, hopefully um, that will solve the problem. So yes, yeah, so I, I was saying, so these are some of those skills that um, when I was, so, when I was in school, I don't know if things have changed right now, but one of the things that we had, I would never, ever, ever forget a chemistry exam that I took, um, or was a science exam. And, you know, the, the, the exam had asked a particular question. I had answered it and I had used my own, you know, logic. I had put in a little bit of my own inference. And I scored, you know, I, I practically failed that exam. And when I went back to the lecturer and was challenging, you know, what's going on? He said, but that's not what I gave you in the notes. You needed to regurgitate exactly what I gave you in the notes. When I asked you to define something, don't give me your own, don't define it and then give me your own opinion. I want you to just define it and move on. And unfortunately, that is what our education system has, you know, constantly done for us. It has put us in a state where we are no longer able to think critically. We're no longer able to problem solve. So when we take that into the workplace, what happens is there's a problem um, and you are carrying that problem to your, to your boss and you're saying, Ma, sir, there's this problem and you are dropping the problem at their feet. But imagine if you were the sort of person who was coming up and saying, I have encountered this problem. This is how I have analyzed it. And this is how, these are the options of things I think we can do. Your boss will remember that. Those are the skills that you need to self-teach yourself. So this right here is the human skills matrix. There are 24 durable skills that workers need to thrive in, the, in today's evolving um, world. And these are those skills that no machine can actually replace, at least not yet. So even as we think about um, jobs that are going to be extinct, machines taking over, there are, these are the skills that you cannot teach a machine. They're just human skills that are required. And these are skills that are needed for leadership, these are skills that will allow you to be promoted over the next person because you all went to the same school. You all studied the same thing. How do you begin 
to stand out. Now, I hear somebody saying, how do I, where do I even start from if I don't have this? Um, this is just a, a quick graph, which I will, I, will, I will rush over, but it's just really talking about where the skills gap and exactly what I have said. With the employer saying, um, I have the job, but I don't have the people that I'm getting. There's a skills mismatch. It's not just about credentials anymore, but we're looking at competencies. Now, it is your job, if the education system has failed to give you that, it's your job to make sure that you close that gap so that you are exactly what the employer is and it give you a better chance of actually doing the job. Now, we're talking specifically to young people here. Let me mention that because the government has a role to play. Employers themselves have a role to play. But in all of this, you cannot sit down and wait for somebody to do it for you, especially when the opportunities are there. So quickly, what can you do? What can you do? Four questions to ask yourself. How is my industry um, affected at this time? Whatever it is that you're doing. What are the short-term and long-term implications, both locally and internationally? Now, COVID-19 has shown us that jobs are uh, borderless. It doesn't matter what country you are, you need to begin to benchmark yourself for global roles. And you can do it from, um, right from, your, from the comfort of your own home. Everybody has talked about digital, digital. The world is going to digital. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time about it. But when we talk about the world going digital, it doesn't mean that everybody needs to be a programmer or everybody needs to know how to do robotics or understand AI. It is about adopting a digital mindset and asking yourself, in this my role, what, what, what role does technology play? What role does digital play? And how can I begin to get myself into that space? So here's a couple of questions I need you to ask yourself very, very quickly. How soon are jobs in my space going to come back? Will my industry grow or shrink? What jobs in my industry will be higher in demand versus lower in demand? What skills are important to have and develop to succeed in the expected new state of my industry? And will there be a shift in how work will be done going forward? And this affects everybody. So let me give you an example. Um, I heard about a, a cleaning business who used to go into homes to clean, used to go into offices to clean. COVID hit and nobody was allowing anybody to come in anymore. They could sit down and wallow in that, but they innovated very, very quickly and started thinking about what are the ways in which we can still, because people still need cleaning services. So what do you need to do to adopt very, very quickly to ensure that you can still have those, um, those services? So very, very quickly, they retrained their staff, they upskilled their staff, they started to do a little bit more technology. They had to get in some gadgets, sort of help with cleaning, such that when I would normally be in your house for two hours cleaning, they were able to shut that down or cut that down to 30 minutes. So you have to adopt a digital mindset. Let me use my accountant example again. Are you just the accountant that balances books and gives it to um, your CEO or to your boss to look at? Or are you the accountant that after you have balanced the books, you have moved a little bit further and you begin to analyze the data? You begin to have predictions. You begin to tell your boss that based on what I'm seeing, you know, I think we need to cut down on here, we need to increase here, we need to grow this part of the business. Those are what that those are the kind of skills that employers want. And they don't come by you just sitting and doing nothing. You need to develop um, that mindset. So let me move very, very quickly. Some other questions to have yourself. Do I know what the skills are that I need or and how do I figure it out? You know what? The world is a global village right now. The internet has opened up, you know, for everybody. Find out what people are doing that may not even exist in Nigeria yet and teach yourself if you need to. Um, there's Coursera, there's edX, there's Udemy. There is so much out there to sort of help you build that skill. And you need to make sure that, um, that, that you know what it is so that you can begin to bridge that gap. So I wanted to talk a little bit about what, else, what, else, what um, else young people can do. I'm sure a lot of us are on social media. Um, what are the sorts of things that you're pushing? I don't know how many of you know that when employers are hiring these days, they actually visit your social media pages. They want to see the kind of person that you are. Um, so when, by the next time you are taking that picture and you're posting it on Instagram that shows you in a very compromising position, you better think twice about it because that might be the reason why you don't get a job and you might never know why. Um, a lot of us have LinkedIn profiles that we have never updated since the first day that we opened that LinkedIn profile. You need to constantly update your LinkedIn profile. That's how you begin to get 
global opportunities. There are key words that you can use on LinkedIn. There are courses that you can actually take on how to use your LinkedIn profile effectively. I know numerous people that have gotten international jobs just by making sure that they're on LinkedIn, they're talking about the things in their industry, they are sharing their input, um, and, and et, et cetera. It's not only about um, um, job, job matching sites, but all of those, your profiles, make you more visible to people, and people begin to sort of um, pay more attention to you. And lastly, and I think Lola talked about this, in all of this, how do I stay focused and energized as I wait during this period of waiting from finished NYSC and moving on to, to work? These are exceptional circumstances. Whether COVID or not, it is hard, just as Ola has said. The jobs are few and far between. Not everybody would get a job. Some of us would become entrepreneurs. Um, some of us would do so many different things. But you need to keep yourself physically fit and healthy. It's only a fit and healthy person <laughs> that can actually work and be effective. So you need to make sure, and I, 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 you know, I always end with this, and maybe this is the pharmacist in me. My, in my former life, I say I was a pharmacist. I studied pharmacy in school um, at, at uni. So I'm always very, very passionate about how are you sleeping, how are you eating. Um, if you are not well in your body, you cannot be effective on any kind of job, whether it's one that you run by yourself or whether it is one that you're going to get. How do you achieve clarity on your financial situation? How are you able to manage cash? I think everybody needs to be financially literate. It's not about being an accountant, but you need to know how to manage finances. Um, there's this thing that I, that, that I, that I learned a few, a few um, months ago. It's called mindfulness. And it's really just taking time away and reflecting on the things that have happened. You can actually just take a deep breath. You know, close your eyes, breathe in, you know, um, five breaths in and out every single day. And the idea is you need to give yourself that space. Um, mental wellness is very, is, is very, very important. Mental wellness is not that I'm depressed or I have a mental disease. It is just that I am well. Um, I am being, I'm able to handle situations that come my way. My body is physically well and, you know, I, and I can be the best that I, I can be. And then join communities and professional groups to help you during this transition, during this time. Um, if you're an accountant, where are those group of accountants that are the senior ones, the ones on your level, the, the mid-level, the entry level, where are they that you can join? I don't know why I keep using um, accountants, um, but anyway. Somebody said mind what? Mindfulness is what it's called, being mindful of, of what is going of what is going on. When you're mindful of your breath, you kind of just center um, center yourself. It's not yoga, it's not anything spiritual, it's just literally um, just taking time out from all of the noise that is going on around you. So join some community, join some professional groups, volunteer. Um, I know that a lot of us, somebody, we talk about money, we talk about money, I need money, I need cash, yes, but sometimes the way to get in is to volunteer your time. So whatever profession you are or whatever it is you want to do, just go to someone and say, you know what, I want to um, I want to just volunteer my time. I want to learn from you. I will bring myself every day for six weeks and I would learn. Guess what? That is a piece of experience that you can easily put on your CV and can take you to places. So as much as we need money, you might need to relax a little bit just to be able to get, get to where you're going. I remember when I was, um, how old was I? I was about 16. Um, I knew I wanted to do pharmacy then, and I actually volunteered. I went into a retail pharmacy shop, and I said, you know what, I just want to be coming here every day and just be watching what you're doing, stacking your shelves, listening. And that was a valuable experience that actually helped me with my university um, application. So lastly, because I feel like I've talked a lot, um, I just wanted to say that a culture of learning will help learners develop a future-proof skill set. You have continuous learning is important. You never stop learning. The day you stop learning is the day that you die. If you, I mean, imagine if you don't, if you don't, if, you are, if those that have said I'm not embracing technology. I use the Uber example. My husband told me um, just yesterday how, you know, a few years ago, he came out of Four Points Hotel. There was a yellow taxi there, yellow, those yellow and striped white taxis. He asked the guy, I think where he was going, the guy said 3,000 naira. My husband said, let me pay 2,000. He said, no. My husband said, let me pay 25. He said, no. In front of him, standing right in front of his, his, um, his, his taxi, my husband called an Uber. The Uber came, and the Uber's charge was 1,500 to take him to his destination. Um, and while that happened, 
um, the, the taxi driver said to my husband that this Uber, it will soon go. It will not, it's going to, it's going to die very soon. Now look at where we are today. You need to continue to learn. You need to continue to evolve. I don't see those um, yellow and black taxis on the road anymore. I feel like a lot of them have probably become Ubers or taxi fast. So if you don't move with the time, if you don't develop yourself, don't wait for somebody to develop you. If you notice a gap, fill it and position yourself rightly for the next opportunity. So I'm going to take a pause there. Um, I feel like I've busted my time a lot, but I love that everybody has been putting some tips and some things that I have been, um, that I've been sharing on here. Um, like I said, you own your own destiny in your own hands. If, like Lola said, if the world has dealt you lemons because your education system was not maybe great or you didn't have some opportunities, turn that lemon into lemonade. Look for those opportunities yourself. Don't spend all of your money on Instagram or, you know, looking, doing chats on WhatsApp. Spend that money on developing yourself through all of these um, online courses that are available. And once you are able to do that, I guarantee you that you begin to truly position yourself for the next level of excellence. So there's um, some contact details if you would like to get in touch. Um, and that's it. Thank you all very much for this. Awesome. Time. A round of applause for Mrs. Muller, please, on the chat. So, Bernie, before you go, I do, we just have, uh, I'll just maybe ask one or two questions. If you have another, if you have a question for um, our facilitator, to please just put it on the chat. Just put it on the chat. That was very, very exciting and, you know, and eye opening. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Can I see more uh -uh, people? Can I see more clubs? I tell you, how do they, how do they say it? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I don't know. Can can you can you um can you touch more on if if you know any place that um these young people can go and learn their skills? I know we've done some trainings. You know, can we can go and learn the skills? Also touch more on. I know um, many people now join fellowships. You know, how is that? Can that be a pathway for them to you know learn the skills and transition effectively to the world of work? Fellowships, scholarships, and the rest. Can you just maybe? If you can just touch a bit on that. Yeah, so, so like you mentioned, as well, we do, we do do training on soft skills. You know, those 24 human skills that I mentioned, it's our bread and butter. It's what, it's what we have always done. Our passion is to get, get more young people ready um, for, for the world of work. Um, but we, we, we are focused really on um, the underserved. A lot of people that come to our program maybe only have an SSC because they don't even have the opportunity to come to the program, even though we're seeing more, more and more graduates. But the reality is um, you do not need um, to go into a, I mean, COVID has showed us, you don't need to go into the four walls of the classroom anymore. Go online and look for these skills. Um, let me tell you something that my daughter does. My daughter and I do, she's nine, and I'm trying to build her, um, um, what's it called now, problem-solving ability. And there are these games on YouTube. Literally, it tells you, it gives you um, a problem, and you have to solve it in, in two minutes. And it makes your brain actually think. Um, so there's, there's resources. I mentioned Coursera. I mentioned Udemy. I mentioned edX. And a lot of them, especially during this COVID time, have free courses um, as well that you can sort of take advantage of. So it's, I mean, the world is your oyster. The only person that is in your way is actually you. You are the only person that is stopping you, um, that, that is stopping you from getting the things that you can do. Did you hear me, Daniel? It seemed like you were frozen for a bit. You're on mute. I can hear you. I can hear okay. you. Okay. Okay. We're talking about Coursera and Endless, yeah. Okay. All and right. then join as many Thank groups as you can. Anything to learn from. I mean, I think for me, I'm a sucker for learning. Um, yeah. Sometimes, you know, it, it, gets, it, gets, it gets a little bit much, but, you know, any group yeah. that you can join to learn. It's not, you don't have to join groups where all you share are all the fake, fake news and, you know, things that mm -hmm. are not really going to add to you. Join groups mm -hmm. that will help you actually improve yourself. All right, awesome. Someone is saying you can join the Nigerian police. You can volunteer with the Nigerian police. <laughs> All yeah, right. Yeah, well. Okay, someone said I just got inspiration now to use LinkedIn, despite the fact that I was scared of using that media because it's intimidating for a young lady in a career. Oh, fantastic. So just just do, just start now. Um, learning is action, right? Don't just learn to add knowledge, right? They say knowledge, um, um, uh, is it knowledge is power? 
but knowledge and action is your superpower. So put everything you've learned to work. Thank you so much, Mola D. Thank you. Thank you for Thank having you. me. All right. So during the course of this, um, of this, of this um, conference today, we have um, a university that will come and tell us about some scholarship opportunities for you. And some of you here will be getting an opportunity to apply and get scholarship to, um, to study in the University of Sussex in the UK. Uh, I'm not sure of that now. But stay, 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 um, stay woke, stay online. You're going to get an opportunity. All right, we have our, our next speaker in the house, um, Mr. George Moraru. Fantastic man fantastic person with a lot of knowledge and information to share but before it comes up i'd just like to say that um this program is called is leap africa's program called i lead so i lead is a program that we're currently implementing in abuja where we're training some some young fellows some nyc um core members that are in turn cascading learning in the education sector in different secondary schools across in, in, in Abuja. So we taught them some leadership and life skills and employability skills. And not just for them, they're also cascading into 450 other secondary school students in Abuja. And that is fantastic. And not just that, they also, you know, taught those learnings or those things they've learned to other core members, about 150 of them. And we'll just have two people just speak a bit on how that program was for them, what they've learned, and how it has helped them to better position for the opportunities they have, all right? So once again, thank you, Malady, for that session. I'm really, really, really happy about that. So I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna um, invite the first, first of all, I'm going to invite one of our fellows, um, Fisayo, to just speak about how the program, you know, has been inspiring for her. Oh, Fisayo, if okay, Fisayo is not there, or Taiwo, uh, can you just raise your hand and I will just, you know, put you, put you up so you can just share a bit on how that program was for you. Um, okay, is it Tai? All right, so just raise your hand and I'll allow you to talk and you just share a bit on how that program was for you. All right, um, Tai, you can speak now. Okay, Tai, I see you online, so Tai, you speak now. So let, let's go with Fisayo first. Fisayo, unmute yourself and just speak to how the program has you know, helped you. And yeah, over to you, you can go. Okay, good morning, everyone. My morning. name is Kisayo, and I'm an elite fellow, and I'm work actually working in Abuja. So I have to start by saying that being a part of the elite fellowship has actually been a life-defining experience for me, and I'm sure other fellows will likewise agree with me. Because of all I've been privileged to experience within the past few months, I've learned new things about myself, like how good I am at managing people, for the peer-to-peer -peer learning sessions, I and my teammates are to recruit members, get one of them whom, whom we eventually convinced to actually join us on the program. And after bringing them on board, we obviously had to make time, their time worthwhile by constantly engaging them with valuable and informative information. And that presented its own fair share of challenges, but we, had to, we actually were able to manage it by interacting with the peers outside the comfort of our WhatsApp platform. And that has helped me improve my communication skills within my peers. And I also learned how to develop a concept note. After the recruitment of the core members, we actually had to develop a one-page concept note on how we're going to run the program after the organization had given us a breakdown of what we're to deliver. And I believe that developing this concept note has already helped me grasp how to execute out and um, write out my idea so I can execute it promptly and I believe it will also be useful for me professionally. I also learned stakeholder management from managing everyone I had to interact with as a fellow, core members, guest speakers, mm -hmm. writing mm -hmm. invitation, um, invitation emails to guest speakers and appreciation emails, then the I lead officials, also receiving feedback from them has helped me to improve my professionalism. The peer-to-peer -peer learning session also helped me to own my facilitation skills so that I facilitated different sessions with positive feedback from my peers. And I even taught some of my peers how to facilitate and I also got positive feedback. And that could have only been possible because of the opportunity I um, Leap Africa gave me to awesome. cascade awesome. my peers. Um, also, for the first time, I worked closely with a mentor. And because of that opportunity to learn from someone in my prospective field, I got a clearer view on the direction I want my career to go. 
And even though the direction I want to go in my career is still a work in progress, I couldn't, I couldn't be happier to know that at least I'm heading in the right direction. And I'm really grateful for the valuable insight my mentor shared with me. Another skill I also picked up um, during my time as a fellow is active reading, where I, every month we're given a book to read. And because of the book review sessions that we have occasionally, I began to develop um, attach happy emotions to reading, and I think that has really helped me to own my reading skill. Oh, that also influenced my writing. Then, from the peer to peer learning session, as I mentioned earlier, that also helped me pick up professionalism from using Google documents and all. And now I, I'm better at communicating to my peers just beyond casual reaching out to them, casually reaching out to them. Now, I can use the Google Calendar and the likes. Okay. I also all learned. Right, importance of community building and um, I'm not going to say I'm really grateful for the opportunity that Leap Africa has given me to own my skills and to own myself. All right. Thank you, sir, for that. Thank you. So that's also, you know, reinforces what we said earlier, join fellowships, right? Identify different fellowships and join because this fellowship gives you an opportunity to learn. All right. Very quickly before we welcome our next speaker, um, Tai, um, just in, in, in two minutes, just share how the experience has been for you so far. All right, just unmute yourself and speak. Let's do this quickly, please. All right. Good morning, everybody. I'm Adiba Otaye Esther. I'm a co-member and also <clears throat> I'm an elite fellow. So yeah. like most co-members, I started my service here like, like with no sense of direction or purpose, but joining Live Africa has made my year purposeful as I've been able to invest greatly into my career and I've improved my professionalism. So furthermore, one of the things we did was teaching um, secondary school students. So teaching mentoring and modeling SS1 students in public secondary school in Abuja offers to me some kinds of priceless joy and satisfaction. So maybe the fact that I'm a change agent, the fact that I'm impacting knowledge and values in some lives, building a new cadre of change agents, I couldn't ask for more, so and the eagerness to offer more to them. So with Leap Africa, I discovered that I built myself, and then teaching became purposeful for me, and teaching with purpose became one of my core values. So we also had um, peer-to-peer -peer learning, and it created a teacher-learner-centered environment. Both I and my peers were co-benefactors. As I taught, I learned through series of webinars created for them, I was able to learn alongside with them. And also as a facilitator, peer-to-peer -peer learning helped me to incorporate teamwork, leadership, creativity, and proactiveness, all which I have learned as an ILEAD fellow. It also reinforced my learnings by teaching and instructing my peers. I gained deeper understanding of the subject, though to achieve all this required loads of sacrifices and commitments, the end result paid off. So also, I'm happy and I'm grateful to leave Africa. They paired me with a, a mentor that's not, that has not stopped at anything, but just to see me being a better version of myself. So being an awesome. elite fellow also comes with loads of sacrifices, which in turn impacted my life. After the employability and entrepreneurship training, my perception of life changed positively, changed for good. Create values for yourself, seek knowledge, keep growing, become a problem solver, and the world will come searching for you. Awesome. All these awesome. and many others I've been able to learn as a fellow. So I want to use this privilege to say thanks to Leap Africa for this great opportunity provided to learn, online, and relearn. Okay. They are not taken for right. granted. Thank you okay. very much. Thank you. All right, guys, that just reinforces the reason why you should join fellowships. I know there's Teach for Nigeria, there's Leap Africa Fellowship. The other outstanding fellowships doing an amazing job. There's Cypher, there's a lot of them. When you join these fellowships, you begin to learn different skills that better positions you for the workplace. All right, people, if you're here with me, can I say a big yes on the chat? I want to know, what is the one skill you need to learn to make, do you think you need to learn this period? Let me know in the chat box. One skill you need to learn, one skill you need to learn. From that first session by, um, um, Molade, what is the one skill you think you need to learn? I want to know in the chat. I want to know in the chat. Someone said design. Someone said design. What kind of design? Is it Akara design? Is it a goosey soup design? Is it graphic design? What kind of design? Let me know. Who else? Who else? What is the one skill you need to learn? Data analysis. Fantastic. That's very important. I see digital skills. Awesome. I see coding. 
Awesome. What other skill? I see business. Sorry, but I see graphic design. Not a. <laughs> All right. I want to see. I want to see communication, digital skills, data management. Awesome. Those are very, very important skills. I see digital. I see food. Oh, wow. Interesting. IT skills. Uh, public speaking. Very important. I mean, if you like what I'm talking right now. I mean, if you like what I'm talking right now. <laughs> digital marketing. Awesome. Human resource management. I like that. Mental management. Woo. That's deep. Who said that? Joseph. Okay. I see. I uh, need to brush up my current coding skills. Awesome. All right. Fantastic. You, your, the, your skills are very important. Right now, I have graphic design skills. I have public speaking skills. I have project management skills. And all the skills, you learn them by doing. Everybody say learn by doing. Learn by doing. Learn by doing. All right, people. We have our next speaker in the house. I'm excited. I'm ready. I'm super pumped up, and I know you are too. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the founder and CEO of Rage Media. is a company focused on positioning, partnering, and promoting building brands uh, by providing tech and media solutions, you know, in Africa. All right, please, ladies and gentlemen, this is the founder of Brainbox, a digital transformation company focused on helping clients move from brick to click. That's offline business model to online and digital business model, allowing them to innovate through technology and realize more of their business potential. He has worked with amazing brands from the FMCG to drinks and to beverage and the likes. Ladies and gentlemen, with a round of applause, with a shout, with a noise, please welcome all the way Mr. George Omararo to take us on this next session. Welcome, Mr. George. Good to see you there. Thank you so much. Thank you so, so much. Um, while you were introducing, I, I was going to hand over the company to you because I mean, it sounds better coming from you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, I'm so honored to be here. I apologize for coming in just a few minutes ago. I was on another conference and then I had to just rush out and come and join here. Um, I, I, consider, I consider everyone on this platform lucky you know, to have such what you like, what I like to call a head start. Um, I remember my own days, you know, um, as, as a copper, even before I, I started serving, even before I went to camp and all of that, I remember how, you know, I used to look for opportunities like this. I probably didn't find as many, but, you know, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm positioned you know, in a better way because of such platforms. So I, I don't think you should take this for granted at all. I think you should give it your best. I think you should tell all your friends about it, you know, because it, one thing I'm going to share with you is how the success of your friends even influence yours, you know. So don't be stingy with platforms like this. Tell everybody, you know, about it and get your friends to join. Um, I'm going to go for the next 30 minutes, I believe, and just share on um, what what i was asked to you know i was told to tell you guys about maximizing opportunities um, um first off we need to understand that the world is filled with opportunities there are opportunities everywhere even in the midst of crisis we still have opportunities um, um if you if you know anything about the japanese and the chinese you know their language is quite different so um, they have they have something called um, you know in their language when they translate crisis to opportunity it looks it looks like the same word so the same word that is crisis is almost the same as opportunity so a Chinese man comes into a town I'm probably reading the, the front page of the newspaper and the headline says crisis in Abuja what he's seeing is opportunities in Abuja okay so the first and most important thing is perspective. Jeff Bezos posits that perspective helps you with 70% on an IQ test. How you see things alone is very important. So I want you to see the world as a, as a land mind filled with opportunities. Winston Churchill says that history will be kind to me because I intend to write it. Okay. So what this means is we're giving a blank canvas. Guys, we all have a blank canvas. We determine what is written on it. And this is done by how we take opportunities. 
okay? Um, a, a lot of people, you know, might say, oh, I probably have a, I'm, I'm from a disadvantaged background or I don't have enough to pivot as this other person has, you know, in comparison with people. But look at it this way. The more disadvantaged your start is, the more fascinate, fascinating your story will be, okay? So look forward to changing your story around. Look forward to turning things around. Problems are programs for profit. Okay, always have that at the back of your mind. Anybody who is looking for opportunity must be looking for problems. And that's why I shared the story of, of the Chinese and Japanese people. Okay, so when they come into a place, look, I, I read a story of, of two guys who went to a city. Okay, and they saw everyone there without shoes. For the other person, it was, hey, there are no shoes here. It was a big deal. It was bad news. And for this guy B, guy B was all about, this is a market for a shoe production company. Okay, and that was what he saw. So how you see the land matters a lot. Are you seeing opportunities or you're seeing problems? Okay, so we need to start from there. We need to start by seeing things rightly. Okay, the land, the world today is filled with opportunities and I'll, I'll get on with that as I move on, okay? So the first thing you need to consider in trying to maximize opportunities is finding the right opportunities for you. There must be that right miss, mix, okay? There must be that right mix between you and the problem you're seeing. Do you have the capacity or the competence, okay? Do you have the strength of character? Do you have the chemistry for this problem that you're identifying? Okay, so it's not just about, I've seen a problem, let me solve it. No, you have to ensure that it is the right thing you're seeing and how you're seeing it matters a lot, okay? Um, so literally, I'm telling you, get up and go out there and look for problems. That's what you need to do. I'm getting up from my seat today. I'm looking out and I'm finding problems. Okay, um, I'll, I'll share with you a few opportunity signposts. I call them opportunity signposts because these things will tell you when you're seeing an opportunity. Okay, the first thing I like to talk about is needs. Okay, needs. Please, if you can hear me, if, you're, if I'm communicating, please just write something so I know that people can hear me. Okay, the first thing that I'm talking about is needs, okay? So you go into a market, um, you look around, what do people need? Thank you, I can see that. What do people need in this market, okay? If there's anything you have learned or you are going to learn from the current situation over the world is that as a business person, as an entrepreneur, as an individual, make sure you have a skill or a business that relates or that solves a problem in essential industries or essential businesses. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. So what I'm trying to say is look at the needs. So everybody shut down. The, some businesses were doing, were prospering, were doing exceptionally well. And this is because they found themselves in the essential space. Okay. So whatever skill you have, whatever skills you're trying to develop, whatever business you're trying to start, always consider, even if it's a long-term thing, even if it's something you're going to do next, consider the essential needs space. In every market, it is important, okay? Because once push comes to shove, I take my Maslow's hierarchy of needs and I'm going back to the bottom. I'm going to the bottom back. I'm going to food, I'm going to clothing, I'm going to shelter. Okay, so make sure that you play in that space. And today, technology is becoming a major part of the essential space. Entertainment is becoming a major part. Okay, so while we sat back and we're, we, you know, we're staying at home and everything, a lot of people grew online. A lot of people became content creators and stuff like that. So yes, that space can also be considered an essential. So what is the need in the market? What do people need in this current market? Very important to consider. Second thing is the numbers, population dynamics. See, you need to understand your population, okay? Don't get into a market, don't get into a business, don't start something, don't pick a career and all of that if the numbers are not favorable, okay? 
except you can see the future. If you have, if you have foresight and you can see that this is a space that will grow, yes. But always understand the population dynamics is very important. What are the numbers of the people? I read a book about Africa Business Revolution, you know, and, and they analyzed the entire continent. Boy, it blew my mind. And what did I do afterwards? I started expanding. See, without a physical office, I reach out to Africa. I work for Africa. In fact, during the last three months, my business outside Nigeria is bigger than in Nigeria itself. So yes, the market is big all over, okay? But understand the dynamics, understand, like I said, the needs and then the dynamics. There are areas that are oversaturated, there are areas that are gray. So look for how to play the population to your advantage. Another thing is the industry value chain, okay? The industry value chain. So let me use the fashion business, for example. A lot of people, you know, are, you know, want to be fashion designers and stuff like that. So there's a long list of, of different value chains in the fashion industry, from the guys that manufacture the fabric, from the guys that even run the farms that produce, the farms that produce um, the raw materials needed for the fabrics, you know, up onto the fashion designers themselves, the people in retail, the people that sell the materials used, the people that manufacture accessories, um, the laundry, owners and all of that. So there's a long value chain. There's value at every point of the chain in that industry. When you want to start something, okay, your first step is to examine, can I meet? I would explain that as I go on, but it's very important to know, I'm trying to rush, very important to know what the value chain presents to you. Another opportunity signpost. Remember, I'm talking about opportunity signposts. The first one I said is needs. The second one I said is numbers. Third one I said is the industry value chain. The fourth one is ignorance, okay? Knowledge has become a highly prized commodity. Knowledge has become a highly prized commodity. Okay, so when you find ignorance in a space, get knowledge. You can monetize knowledge. <clears throat> you can monetize knowledge. You can sell knowledge. You can coach people. You can write ebooks and all of that. And from the comfort of your room, you can touch the world. You can make money. People can pay you from anywhere over the world for knowledge that you have gained. Okay, but you have to gain it first. So once you see that there's a knowledge gap in a particular area, get knowledge. Once you get knowledge, you convert that into a product and you sell, you hit the market. Okay, so ignorance is something to look out for. Um, deficit in infrastructure is another thing. Okay, so I mean, that's a big problem, especially in a country like Nigeria. So we'll find ourselves in a developing nation where we need to build some infrastructure for our business, for crying out loud. You run a business, you have to provide electricity, you have to provide security, you have to provide transportation, you have to provide everything required to run your business. There's little or no support, okay, in terms of infrastructure. Okay, so consider the deficit in infrastructure. So aside building your own business, can I even supply infrastructure to people who run the same business as I am? One of the ultimate, um, ultimate, ultimate points, ultimate places you find yourself is when you are a supplier to your competitor, okay? When your competitor has to patronize you and then you even have a share of their market share. So you need to see the deficit in infrastructure and how you can, you can work on that. Another signpost, okay? opportunity signpost is room for improvement. Okay, so innovation is what is touching the world today. Innovation is changing the world, is changing the game. Nobody is literally doing anything new, and that's a fact, okay? We're all recycling old ideas. We're recycling old ideas and presenting them in new ways, okay? Take any industry, take transportation. Airline was an innovation, okay? So it, it came from People had to move from place to place or move goods from place to place, right? So they, they moved from walking or animals to vehicles and all of that. And it graduated up on time where you now fly. And then look at how you move from sending letters, physical letters, sending emails and all of that. So innovation, okay? 
trading or recycling old ideas is what i mean look at the re, um, the real estate industry so it started by building houses and then and it started by um selling houses you know um you now had brokers and then from brokers you move to um flipping so people buy old houses and flip them and sell we keep innovating okay so you don't necessarily have to take something new to do what you need to do is to look at an old idea and reinvent the process you need to innovate right um so every market has its own peculiarity and then your job is to find it I would say that the greatest skill I came on when you know everyone was writing skills that they need to learn and all of that beautiful stuff amazing I like the fact that you're already thinking like that at this stage okay but the greatest skill in today's economy is what I call the problem solving skill okay so what you need to do is to position yourself as someone who solves problem problems I solve problems for a living Okay, I one of the things I did um, in, in the last two years is I, I stopped restricting myself to a particular solution. So I stopped selling myself as, oh, I'm an advertising guy. Oh, I'm a marketing expert. Oh, I'm this, I'm that. And I started selling myself as a solution myself. So you have any problem in your business, I can solve it. Now, I don't necessarily have to have the skills to solve it, but I may have the collaborations. So I can make up, if you find yourself, listen to this, if you find yourself average at any time, okay, get leverage, which is collaboration, which is partnerships and all of those things, and then it will give you mileage. So at every point in time, get leverage, to cover up for your average and then it will give you mileage so that's what you need to do make sure that you are you have an ear to hear problems a lot of times we're talking to people we are talking to people and they're telling us their problems but we're instead of solving it we join them in you know this discussing around it and we do not solve it for them so that's something that you can trade easily solve problems for people so post nyse you have two decisions you're either going to be jobless or you're either going to, you, you can either be not employable, forgive me. So you have two choices. So you're going to be jobless or not employable. Now there's a, there's a difference, okay? Everybody starts from that point where you don't have a job. But is the case, the fact that you are jobless or you are not employable? Now your skills make you employable. There are a lot of CVs I get. Honestly, I kid you not. I don't see how these people, if they don't change, will ever get an opportunity to make anything out of themselves, okay? So it's very important that we sit back and make ourselves employable, we'll add value to ourselves. What are the problem solving skills? I'm trying to rush, okay? Um, te tech literacy, sales and marketing, project management, innovation, creativity, coding, and all those things you said, on and on. You know the skills already, get the skills. But most importantly, be tech literate because there is already a technology somewhere that can solve my problems. Maybe I'm not finding it. Maybe you know how to work your way around it. Okay, sales, everybody has a sales problem. Everybody has a sales problem. Because even if I'm selling my 100% capacity as a businessman, I want to improve. So I have a new sales challenge. Okay, how do you solve that? Project management. You know, how do you help me ensure that my results are optimized? I'm operating based on capacity and not just the opportunities I'm getting. Innovation and creativity. Who can think about innovations for me who can come up with creative ideas for my growth i need people who can think like that so that's those are very important um, pro, um problem solving skills that we need okay the playing field has been leveled now let me say that again the playing field has been leveled the world is now flat we find ourselves being able to transact across the world now we can touch america now we can we can do all sorts okay like I was telling you, in this last two, three months of lockdown, I have generated more revenue outside of Nigeria than in Nigeria. And that is because of what the world has done. So I sit behind my computer, right? And I transact to people all over the world. I do stuff for them. So you have to open up your mind. You are no longer in competition with the average Nigerian. Sorry, you lost the chance to compete with just people in your locality. Now you are competing with people all over the world. They are way more exposed. They are way more advanced. So you need to open up your mind. 
okay? Open up your mind to so much knowledge. I'll just share a few pillars for maximizing opportunities as I round up because my time is almost up. First, I want you to take your mind back, okay? Take your mind back. You see, the algorithms, if you're familiar with social media, social media is being controlled by algorithms, right? And what you have now is individuals who are also controlled by these algorithms, okay? So the algorithms determines what they serve you. Instagram determines the kind of things you see, the knowledge you get. Google determines the ads that are shown you, the things that you find on your first page when you search for information. Can you stop being controlled by algorithms and go for knowledge that will actually help you? I saw how the, the guys in CBE, the school in China, the business school in China, they are currently working on how to upgrade the human brain. Now, this is something that they will do, okay? And it will come to us as innovation, as whoa, whoa, but they're already doing it. And a lot of us don't even know that that is happening, okay? We need to catch up. We're playing catch up right now. We need to open our minds. We need to go for knowledge, invest in knowledge, okay? Stop looking for entertainment. Start looking for education, okay? Look for how to use these tools that the internet age has provided with us, Use for, look for how to use these tools to build your mind, to upgrade your mind. I have a favorite quote that says, empty your pockets to fill your mind, and then your mind will in turn empty itself to fill your pockets. Okay, so take out money, buy books, attend webinars, take um, personal development courses and all of that. Spend your money to fill your mind. And then what happens is that same knowledge that you have gained will come out. Okay, your mind will empty itself into your product, into your book, into your solutions, and then you can sell that and it will fill your pockets back. Okay, so knowledge is an is knowledge is the best investment. I need to rush. Number two, the law of work. Now I'm talking about pillars for maximizing opportunities. And I said the first one is taking your mind back. The algorithms have seized our minds, but we need to take them back. Okay, the second thing is the law of work. We are in a generation that chooses, lab, that chooses favor over labor, okay? We find ourselves always saying, it will, by favor, by favor, it will happen to me. I don't, nobody wants to work, okay? We need to be the few that will put in the work. Somebody has to put in the work. It is the work that gets favored, okay? If you want to get, you want to get into a room, you have to have competence, Okay, so even if your charisma or your character gets you into the room, what will keep you on the table is your competence. Because after a while, it will show that, oh, no, it just has charisma. It's not good at this. Okay, so you need to work hard. Work is not a curse. It is not a curse. We must be productive. Do not be find, found idle. Forgive me. Do something, anything. Don't ever find yourself idle. A lot of times you just find yourself, you know, scrolling through your screen and all of that. You're not doing anything. Don't find yourself idle at any point in life. Always find something to do. Push your values out. Offer a service for free. Get somebody to get a trial on your ideas or something. And then you can sell if the person is interested, you know. But don't sit idle. Work smart. Very important. Now. I, I have two axes, okay? Um, one is extremely sharp and then one is dull. And I give two different people. The person with the sharp ax, it cuts a tree down in 20 minutes. The person with the dull ax, it cuts the tree down in two hours. The difference between the sharp um, ax and the dull ax is the capacity that they have. They are sharpened. They have gotten knowledge so they can work faster. That is where smart work comes in. We must work smart, always. Now look at this. People will always die more from no work than hard work, okay? At every point in time, people will always die more from no work than hard work. Hard work doesn't kill. Jim Rohn posits that there are two types of pain in life. The first one is the pains of hard work. And the second one is the pains of regret, okay? I would rather choose the pain of hard work, which is bearing my burdens in the days of my youth, than choose the pain of regret, which is regretting 
not working when I was younger, okay? It, 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 it is better to bear the pain in the days of my youth. So choose your pain, guys. Choose your pain. Do you want the pain of hard work or you want the pain of regrets? The choice is yours. Um, the, third, third, um, the third thing I'm saying, I'm talking now, remember, I'm talking about pillars for maximizing opportunities. So I'm trying to rush. I'll just probably stop um, once, the time, once my time is up. Okay, next one is you need to start from within. Now, this is very interesting. Understand this. The seed, okay, the seed was created with the ability to become a tree. Okay, so when the seed was created, it was a forest that was seen, not a seed. When the bird, the egg was laid, it was an eagle that was seen, not the egg. When the fish was created, you know, the egg of the fish was laid and all of that. It was a fish gliding. It was created with the ability to swim. It was created with the ability to swim. The bird was created with the ability to fly. The seed of the tree was created with the ability to be a huge tree. So look at yourself. Look inwards. There are some things that you have been created with the abilities to do. But guess what? The bird that was the eagle. Let me tell you a story about the eagles. Okay? So the eagle usually at full age, when it's fully grown, when it stretches its wings, is about seven feet long. I am six, I'm six one. Okay, so an eagle is when it's is bigger than me. Huge bird. Okay, but, but guess what? When it gives birth to it gives back to his um to the egg, right? And is and he, you know, incubates it and all of that, and the egg hatches, and then it, it carries the eaglet on his back. Now imagine a seven feet huge bird carrying the eaglet on his back and goes up all the way up and then drops the baby. He drops the baby, he expects the baby to fly because he's trying to push out that which it was created to do. Okay, so there are some things that are inside of us, some, some intrinsic values that are in it to us, which we must maximize, we must push out. These are the things that will make us fly. Now, the eaglet, when it's dropped from his mother's back, has two options. I either die or I fly. That's the thing. So say to yourself, I have the ability to fly. I will choose to fly. So it's either I die or I fly. I fly. Now look at this. Innovation is not creating anything new. Remember I said that. It is, it is, it is basically reinventing an old concept. So I either innovate or I die. That's what I mean by fly or die. So I, I, I look back when I'm being dropped. I see my father flapping his wings. I start to flap my wings. There are things inside of us that we can monetize. Guys, every human being was created with value inside of them. You have been created with value inside of you, okay? But you need to turn that talent into a skill, okay? You need to turn that talent into a skill. And sometimes you need to upskill, you need to reskill. Wherever you find yourselves, guys, you have something. Use it. You have something, use it. Now, number four, I'm talking about pillars, pillars with which we maximize opportunities, okay? I've talked about taking our minds back because our minds are very important. I've talked about the law of work. We need to work, okay? I've talked about starting from within. There is something inside all of us that, can, that we can turn to value. My time is up. I can see Daniel. Okay, the next one is um, my network. My network is truly my network, okay? That statement is not overrated, guys. I can assure you, your network is always your network. So ask yourself these questions. Who do you know? Who do you know? Very important. Make a list. Who knows you? Very important as well. What does anyone depend on you for? Now, these are questions that you must ask yourself. See, I was teaching a few people the other day and I was telling them about how to become a millionaire. Really, you become a millionaire by solving a million problems, okay? 
really is one problem for a million people. Okay, that's how to look at it. Um, you can flip the side and say, okay, I'm not mass market. Maybe I'm upper market. Okay, so I am not solving. Um, I mean, I'm not solving a problem for a million people. I'm solving a million narrow worth problem for one person. You know, depends on how you see it. However, it all boils down to the value of the problems you're solving. Okay, so how many people depend on you for a solution? That's a very important question you must ask yourself. If you sell a product today, you sell a product today, and the product is worth um, 10 Naira, okay? And you can sell to 1 million people. Guess what? There are over 200 million Nigerians. If you can sell to 1 million people, just 1 million people, you make, uh, you make 10 million Naira if your profit margin is 10, 10 Naira. So think about it that way. How many people truly depend on you for solutions? That is where your money is, okay? Collaborate, which, is, which ties directly to what I was talking about on you building a network, okay? I need to round up now. Uh, I'll just talk about two more things, collaborate and one more, and then I'm off, okay? First one is collaborate. Please, don't even bother about eating alone. Don't eat alone. Forget it. Don't eat alone. The world has changed, okay? The more people you can collaborate with, okay? determines the more value you can produce, determines the more people you can serve. I sit here in Nigeria and then I attend to clients in America, I attend to clients all over the world. I have people on ground support who can help me with that. It's mind blowing. I'm collaborating, I'm building value. So don't bother eating it alone. Now, look at this interesting statistics. 20% of 2 billion is better than 100% of 100 million. Beat that. I would rather go for 20% of 2 billion, okay, than having 100%. Oh, I'm the, I'm the chairman, CEO, and group managing director of blah, 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 man, whatever. What I want to see is value. If I can collaborate to elevate, I will do it, okay? I would do it. So let's hit the ground running. Look for people who, look, what are you doing with your friends? What? Are you sending only memes on social media to each other? What are you doing really? Are you guys collaborating to build something phenomenal? What are you doing? Collaborate to elevate. Identify your strengths, okay? Identify your strengths and weaknesses. Do a SWOT analysis on yourself. Sit down, make a list of your strengths. Make a list of your weaknesses. Make a list of your opportunities. Make a list of your threats. Do a SWOT analysis on yourself. Look for people who, who their areas of strengths are your areas of weaknesses. Look for such people, partner with them, get something doing with them, and that way you collaborate to elevate, okay? Last point I'll take today is speed. Very important, okay? And now you remember what I'm talking about, guys. Don't lose it. Pillars for maximizing opportunities. Take your mind back. The law of work um, starts from within. Your network is truly your network. Collaborate to elevate. Speed is the last one I'll be sharing with you. I have 15 of these, but time will not allow me. I'm sorry I talk, you know, a lot, so I couldn't rush everything within 30 minutes. Forgive me, guys. I'm sure I'll see you guys again somehow. Okay, but speed, the last one I'll talk about. Don't wait till it is perfect to move. Okay? Don't wait till it's perfect to move. A lot of people, they wait for everything to be perfect before they, you know, they do it. They release their product. There's a guy that said something. He said, if you are proud of your first launch, the day you launch your first product, if you are proud of it, you launch too late. Okay? Don't wait till it's perfect to move. Success is not a destination. It's a journey. Okay? So even when you think, oh, it's perfect now, as you really look at how fast technology moves. I have a friend, okay? I have a friend is building is building a, a mobile phone device. Very, very, very phenomenal product. But guess what? It, it, it hasn't launched any because the year is planning to launch. There's an upgrade on Samsung. There's an upgrade on Apple. And he, he has to go back to the drawing board because he's competing with their past. Okay, launch, move, move, move. Listen to this very important line. It is not the big that eats the small. It is the fast that eats the slow. Okay, go out there with your product. Pick what you have and go out. 
go out into the market, win, okay? It doesn't matter if you don't get it right at first. Learn from your mistakes. You are at an age where you can learn. There are three phases in life. You learn, you earn, and then you yearn, okay? You are at the phase where you can learn. Go out there, make the mistakes, okay? Listen to this. The opportunity of a lifetime must be seized within the lifetime of the opportunity. Hey! In case you didn't hear that, I'll say it again. The opportunity of a lifetime must be seized within the lifetime of the opportunity. So yes, you've spotted an opportunity, but it has a life cycle. Don't wait till we have moved away from that era before you come out with it. You will be too late to the market. So guys, you find the opportunity, you move out there with speed. Thank you so much. I'm so grateful to Leap Africa for this. Awesome. Um, awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. you. Some, sorry, I cut to something. No, I was just going to say thank you to everyone on the team. Okay. I, I think this All is right. an amazing platform. Okay. And um, I, I'm, I'm glad to be, I'm privileged actually to be, to be part of this and to speak um, to these people, these amazing people today. Thank you so much. I'm grateful. Right. Um, um, Nikkei D'Souza was asking if you have a podcast, but that this was a very powerful presentation. Are you th have you thought of doing that? I, I have thought of doing that, but I, I'm, 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 I'm preaching to myself today. I must move okay. with speed. I must start with you know? <laughs> So, yes, I actually do videos. I do videos, yeah. not podcasts, yeah. but yes, I will just immediately turn the audios and then share. Yeah. I'll share. So, definitely. so follow George on, on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter. He's a very exceptional person. Please put a, put a clap, put a, put a standing ovation in the chat box. That was powerful. I want everybody to start saying I'm a problem solver. I'm a problem solver. I'm a problem solver. There's this in her head. He said, the bigger the problem, the bigger the solution. The bigger the solution, the bigger the value. The bigger the value, the bigger the money. The bigger the money, the bigger the boy. <laughs> All right, put a round of applause for George. That was awesome. George, thank you thank so, so you much for that session. Thank you so much. It was really inspiring. Beautiful. And I believe the youth now know how to better position for the opportunities they have. Thank you, George. Thank you. And thank, thank you, too, for... Um, Nikkei de Souza on the chat box, very exceptional. Uh, um, she's an educational international development consultant. Um, it's a better shout out to her for all the contributions there. Thank you, George. All right, people, um, we're going to move on very quickly. And like I said earlier, we have um, the University of Sussex will be telling us about their scholarship opportunities for first year in the house that will be of that it will be of benefit for. Are you ready? To, are you ready to hear that? Who wants to hear that about a, uh, a, an opportunity for you to better position yourself? So we have some representative. I'm sorry. All right. So we have some representative of the University of Sussex that will be just telling us very briefly on um, the scholarship opportunities they have for some of us in the house today. But before they do that, before they do that, we'll have our... Exec the executive director of, um, of Lean Africa, Femi Taiwo, who will just be giving a very short remark and will uh, get into that and share with us the, um, um, uh, the what's it called now? The, where they will share with us the scholarship opportunities. But before then, we'll have um, Femi Taiwo just do a very short remark um, and we'll kick us down. I want to know in the chat, what breakout session did you, re did you register for? Creatives? Agriculture or digital? Let me know. Let me know in the chat. What, what, what breakout session did you register for? Yeah, I see P saying I'm a problem solver. I'm a problem solver. Begin to say that to yourself every time. You're a problem solver. Let me see. Let me see. Creatives. I see agriculture. I see digital. I see, I see amazing. I see agriculture. Fantastic. Awesome. All right. We're going to go into the breakout session shortly. Um, but I'll just allow um, Femta to give a short remark. And after he does that, we'll have um, Shola Awonikoko uh, from University of um, Sussex tell us about the scholarship opportunities. Then we'll go straight into the breakout session. All right. Thank you, over to you. You're welcome. How are you doing, sir? Hello, Daniel. I'm fine. Awesome. All right. Good, good. As All you right, can see, I'm, I'm in the roads of Lagos. <laughs> um, <laughs> <Hi>. <laughs> well, really, really right. excited to be here. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm really excited to hear from, um, I, I called the last part of George. Um, George is an amazing guy, um, amazing journey, amazing story, amazing group of companies 
that he has built. Um, and George, just to mention that we would we would need to create a whole session around you at another time to be able to, you know, draw more from your wisdom, draw more from your experience, draw more from the insights that you have. Um, so my assignment is very simple. It's just to say a big hi to everyone. Thank you for making our time um, to join in this Saturday. And we have many more of these um, um, things packed up for you for the rest of the year. Um, thank you to my colleagues, Aisha, Daniel, and everyone that put this together. Um, so my, the key word is that on our journey to becoming, on our journey to fulfilling um, our destiny and our potential, um, we need a very solid mix of insight, inspiration, um, the right community, the right ecosystem. And that's what, what, that's what today, that's what's happening today. That's what we offer the fellows that join our fellowship program. And that's what we just wanted to offer to more young people out there together with the fellows. Um, so I, I'm, I'm sure from Molade to Tiwa to George Omoraro, you're getting a lot of inspiration mm -hmm. to start, a lot of insights on what to, to, to jump into, how to jump into what you need to jump into. So I just want to say maximize the opportunities, the notes you've taken from the, um, the earlier speakers and the notes you would take for the remaining, um, the remaining sessions today. Make sure you just put them to work. Like George said, it's, you know, um, it's better done than, than perfect. You know, done is better than perfect. So be ready to jump into it and jo go, go for more insights. You know, make sure you're constantly inspired. Look for the right mentors, the right coaches. Look out for um, the programming and all that um, services that will be offering in Leap Africa that would help you on your journey to becoming. And all the best on that journey, basically. Thank you so much. Thanks, Daniel. All right, all right, people. I'll give a round of applause for Femi Taiwo on the chat. Let me see, let me see the MODs, the stand innovation. Woo! Done is better than perfect. Make sure your done is excellent. Done, just keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. I'm a problem solver. I'm a problem solver. Awesome. All right, so we're going to have Shola Owani Koko from the University of Sussex tell us about the scholarship opportunities he has for us. Oh, I know, I, I know, I, know I, I, I think I know him. I know you. I know you from the Easter Christian Center. All right. We're going to have, um, shall I tell us about that opportunity? And after that, very quickly, we're going to, we're going to have, um, we're going to have the breakouts and I'm going to tell you how that breakout is going to work. So please stay tuned, stay tuned. All right. Over to you, Shola. How are you doing? Good to have you here. Yeah, I'm very well. Thank you for having me. I hope everyone can hear me. Fantastic. We hear it loud and clear with a very big buzz. All right. Over to okay. you. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, once again, thank you so much for having us here uh, on behalf of the, the University of Sussex, uh, based in Brighton, uh, the, uh, in the UK. Uh, uh, Tosin is also on this platform, who, uh, who is a, um, one of the officials from, from the University of Sussex. So I'm just going to go uh, to share the information I have real quick. Uh, like, like introduce me. My name is Olusha Lawunko. I'm a development practitioner based uh, in Lagos. Uh, so before, and I'm going to, you know, just quickly share my story. Before going to study at the University of Sussex, uh, I studied there in the year 2017 to, to 18. I had been working in the development sector for a, uh, a couple of years before then. Uh, but then at that point, I wanted an experience that would help to, you know, give me the right background, you know, the right network. Uh, to give me access to, you know, uh, materials and resources, especially uh, to be able to address the work we do from a, uh, you know, a research-based point of view, uh, to understand how the landscape of international development is. And I'm talking about international development because that is my field. Uh, and of course, uh, success was that school that I applied to. And um, I didn't just get the admission I wanted, I also got um, full scholarship support to, to support my education throughout, uh, which covered my tuition and gave me some, uh, you know, um, living expense to help me, you know, uh, during my studies there. But the, the truth of the matter is the scholarship I got was just part, you know, a, 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 you know, like less than half of the support I got from the school. Because uh, since being part of that school, I've been part of a very huge network uh, that has continued to help her work at um, Project Enable Africa, which I co-founded, uh, which I founded and run, and then Stanford Hedge, the, uh, the, the parent organization to Project Enable Africa. And of course, the support, being a part of the uh, large alumni network and hall has been awesome. You know, so the, the Success University itself is a research, leading research um, 
intensive university that is ranked first in the world of development studies and top 50 for business and economics, uh, top 150 overall in the world. And uh, I think that that profile is good to position for, you know, a lot of things that we might want to do as young people uh, in terms of creating impact, you know, building institution and making change happen. Uh, the campus is the only UK university situated entirely in a national park a few minutes from outside the city of Brighton, just an hour away from London. So it's really close to London. Uh, by the way, when I was schooling, I, I also was working with a consulting firm in London, and that was only easy because the, the school itself was close to London. This is just giving the background to the University of Sussex and, um, you know, um, helping us understand before I talk about the scholarship opportunities that are available itself. And of course, um, Success has the long history with Africa and has produced lots of alumni, including Gbemisola uh, Saraki. Uh, many of us might know that uh, President Tabo Mbeki, the, he was a former president of South Africa. Incidentally, yesterday also was his birthday. Uh, you know, uh, the President Festus Magu from, from uh, Botswana and the Vice President, uh, Vesbrain George uh, Saitoti from Kenya. And those are notable uh, alumni. Uh, that the school has, has produced. And of course, the school is waiting to count you as part of the notable alumni that will pass through the school. Uh, we are proud. Uh, so of course, I'll just quickly talk about some of the scholarship. Uh, uh, there are a couple of them. Uh, the first one is the Chancellor Scholarship, which uh, gives up to 50% tuition uh, scholarship uh, to you know, students, undergraduate and postgraduate students. And there's one that is specifically designed for Nigeria, which is called the Success Nigeria Scholarship that gives uh, between 3,000 to 5,000 uh, pounds of scholarship uh, you know, funds to support students uh, during, the, uh, you know, during their studies there. Uh, the one I got, which I'll quickly talk about, is the IDS student, uh, IDS graduate scholarship, which gives 100% uh, scholarship uh, to students studying at the Institute of Development Studies, which is one of the, uh, you know, the institutions within within the University of Sussex. Uh, that basically covers 100% tuition, 100%, um, you know living expense and a, a lot of other opportunities around that. Uh, the, goal of, the goal at the end of the day of this session is to give participants the opportunity to know that such opportunity exists. And um, the best thing you can do, and this would be my advice for anybody who wants to access these opportunities, to start to position for it, especially if you're seven, uh, if, 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 if you're in your NYC or you're just out, because sometimes it takes a bit of focus and uh, being intentional to get some of these funding opportunities, right? So the best, uh, what you want to start with is to identify the program you want to do, uh, connect with the school. And of course, there's a scholarship page on the University of Success website where you can find out about a lot more scholarship. You know, there are a lot more about the uh, scholarship than the ones I've mentioned. There's a Chivening one that you can apply to and school there. There's a Commonwealth scholarship that you can also have access to, to school at the University of, you know, to, to get uh, to school at the University of Sussex. But more importantly is understanding your direction, your career direction. It does, it could be development, it could be business, it could be law, whatever it is, the University of Sussex has a place for you. Uh, so it is basically um, putting together a plan and then start to put in your application. I usually advise that the first thing to do is to apply for an admission first, make sure you're admitted, and then you can begin to have that conversation about um, a scholarship. The other interesting thing is there is a regional office for the University of Success in West Africa that is based in Lagos, where you can connect. And I'm sure you can find details about that on the university um, website, where you can connect, find help, because when I was applying to I connected to the um, web regional office and I got all the support I, I needed in terms of how to put my application together, which scholarship application to go for, uh, which particular scholarship to go for, and uh, a lot of others, and, uh, a lot of others. And when you're on campus, the, the support system is also really huge. There's a Success Nigeria uh, Association that uh, is really, really helpful. They go as far as picking me up from the airport the first day I arrived there to, you know, helping me improve my writing skills to knowing who to find as mentor, you know, academic mentor and all. And all of those are really, really important and strategic in ensuring that you get the best out of your school uh, experience. Uh, and 
uh, the, the COVID-19 uh, pandemic shouldn't stop you because um, learning, like you know, in many universities are online, the scholarship access to scholarship are online. And the good thing about studying in the UK is that I didn't even enjoy is there are now, you know, provisions made around immigration post studies that can support you, whatever your plans or ambitions are, uh, either to pursue a career in the UK or come back to Nigeria, whatever it is, the opportunities that can support you to, to achieve your dreams. So I'm just going to say that to get more information because of time, uh, do visit, uh, find time to visit the University of Sussex website where you will get all the information you need about different scholarships. There are a lot of scholarship opportunities there. I only mentioned the ones that I think are most relevant to uh, to everyone. And you can also connect to uh, the regional office, uh, which is in Lagos, where you can find more information, find more support. And even they can, they can connect you to, you know, uh, alumni who are doing wonderful, who can help you review your application, make sure you get, you know, things together and all. Uh, I can see some questions coming up in terms of um, the university website and all. I can drop all of those on the chat, uh, you know, so that you can have access to them, you can copy them. I'll still stay around for a while after this session. And if there are questions, I don't know how this is structured, but if there's an opportunity, I'll be happy to take questions from application to experience in the UK and, you know, how to, you know, position. And one thing I can tell you is schooling at success, you are not just, you are not just there, they, they are not just interested in you when you are there, but I've gotten a lot of support post school. So I got returned to Nigeria in terms of connecting me to funding opportunity for our organization, in terms of connecting us to consulting opportunities, in terms of cons connecting us to learning materials and resources and other alumni that can help. Thank you so much. All right, all right. Thank you so much, Shola. Um, so Shola will drop the link in the chat. Then if you have any question, use the Q&A section. So um, Shola will directly answer your questions in the Q&A section, in your phone or your laptop, whatever you're using. You use, you say, please call Q&A, um, Q&A. So put your questions in the Q&A session, not on the general chat session now, so until we get lost, put in the Q&A session and it will directly reply. I, I know, Shola, can you see the Q&A session from your end? There's a question there already for you. So you can just answer directly. Can you see the All right. the, I'll, you see? I'll, Yeah, I think I can. Okay, fantastic. So it will, it will just answer directly to that. All right. So I asked earlier, what group did you register for? And I see many people said creatives, digital, agriculture. I want to know again. I want to know again. What breakouts did you register for? It's time for the breakouts. And this is what we're going to do. I'm going to tell you I'm going to break out now. We have exceptional people to take us on this breakout. Now, the breakouts are not just breakouts. They are called the Pathways to Progress. The pathways, what are the different pathways you can use to get employment, to transition into the world of work? You can go into the creatives industry, you can go into the agricultural industry, and you can go into the digital industry. Those are the three main major industries um, amongst other industries. Oh, I see many creatives, I see many agricultures. I wanna know, I wanna know in the chat, I wanna know in the chat. I wanna know in the chat. Thank you, Nikke, thank you for your time. Thank you for coming and inspiring us and motivating us to be and better people. Thank you for that. And thank you, everyone. All right, let me know, let me know, let me know. Agriculture, 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 digital, awesome. Now, this is how it's going to go. Now, the first breakout session is going to be for creatives. The second breakout session is going to be for um, digital, mark, digital, and the last will be for agriculture. Now, we're going to start with the first breakout session, which is creatives. Now, this is how it's going to work. Can you all hear me? Can you all hear me? And you, are you excited about this next breakout session? I want to know. Can you hear me? And are you excited about the breakout session? Can you? Can you? Can you? Can you? Awesome. And you're excited. Awesome. Now, these are going to work. Creatives is going to start first. After creatives, we have digital. And after digital, we have agriculture. So this is how it's going to work. Um, the creatives is going to start now and end at about... At about 1.30 or 1.20, thereabouts. When it's 1.20, digital will start, and digital will last for about 30 minutes. And when it's 1.50, our Greek will start. Now, the way it's going to work is that if you're not for, listen, please, if you're not for creatives right now, if you're agriculture and digital, you can sign out. Creatives stay back, right? So creatives, you have your session. When it's 1.20 or 1.30, digital will come back online. 
I'm going to be sending you a notifications email when is your time to digital will come back online. And after 30 minutes of that session, um, or if you want to stay for every session, you can. But if you want to, you know, stay for your own session, you can come by our advice. If you want to stay for creatives, know how the creative industry is going, explore all the pathways so that you even know where to choose. Remember what um, um, George said earlier in the session, you just have to do. Understand what the different markets are, understand what the different pathways are. So I advise you to stay. But if you want to uh, log out and join in, agriculture will start at about, um, Agriculture, we start at about 150, 150, just after digital and creative. But I'm going to be sending you notifications email um, for, for that. So the creatives, your session is going to start now. Um, we already have digital facilitator online already, is ready. And that digital will start by 125, 130, thereabouts, is ready to give you everything you need to know about the digital space, right? They're all interrelated. You can stay for all as much as you can, but we're going to go straight to the creatives. We have a Lambda from Paracycling here with us. We have um, Am Dodos, a very exceptional YouTuber and content creator here with us. And to um, moderate this session will be Aisha Osman. Is Aisha in the house? All right, creatives. If you want to go into the creatives industry, you want to learn more about the creatives, you want to know how to start a career in the creatives industry, this is for you. All right, people, I'm going to sign out now, and Aisha's going to take over. Are we together? Creatives, can I see a yay in the chat? Can I see a yay in the chat? Creatives, people, where are you? Where are you now? I see ya. I say yay. I'm there, yeah. I'm seeing yay, pa. I'm seeing yay, yay. All right, awesome. Over to you, people. Let's go. Hey everyone, thank you so much Daniel for that very exciting welcome. Um, so my name is Aisha Oswan and I'm going to be taking this part of the conference. So it's the Pathway to Progress session and we're going to start with the creatives just as Daniel has said. So just before we go into it, I'd like to give a little bit of context as to what we're trying to achieve with this session. So to start with, there are 20 million young people that are currently unemployed in Nigeria, right? And these statistics are as recent as 2019. And what this means for us is that, well, even though there, there are 20 million people that are unemployed, and that is a bad, that's to quite an extent a bad thing, there's also a bit of a silver lining we could see. And um, that silver lining would be that it has encouraged youth to pave a way for themselves. So we'd say that in, um, 2016, when we last, when Nigeria last saw a recession, um, there's been a tremendous shift in what we're now calling new and emerging economies. So the new and emerging economies, which would be the creatives, which would be the digital, which would be the um, agriculture, have um, been more and more recognized. And to be specific, the creative industry has even been recognized as the Nigerian creative industry has even been recognized as the fastest growing in the world. And then the digital has also been bringing in a lot of foreign investments for Nigeria. And the agriculture um, industry has also been contributing significantly to our GDP. So basically, what are we trying to say? We're trying to say that these three um, sectors are providing an immense opportunity to our youth. And this is something youth need to be tapping into. So to keep it very short, if you're someone who has been curious about either of these sector sectors, or you've even been bold enough to start something, then these sessions are perfect for you because you're going to be learning a whole lot from our um, experienced panelists. And because they've once been youth coppers like you, they were once undergraduates, they were once graduates, but then they've, able to, they've been able to build um, careers and professions from themselves. So we're going to be hearing from them very shortly. And um, yeah, I think we're just going to go right into it and we'll start with the creatives. So I see, okay, um, is a to be on here? I can't seem to. A chance, see. yes. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to start with the creatives. We have I am Dodos. 
We have, and I am Dodos is a YouTube influencer. She's um, a content creator. She's a fashion and um, lifestyle blogger as well. You can check her up on YouTube, Instagram. And then we have Olamide Ayeni Babajide, and she's the founder of Pearl Recycling. And Pearl Recycling is a company that is a social enterprise that um, upcycles waste. So things like tires, they um, transform them into chairs, into tables, beautifully crafted chairs and tables. So she's going to give us some more insights as to how, some more insights on her experience. And um, I think one really interesting thing about Olamide in particular is that she was part of Leap Africa's Social Innovators Program where she learned to build her business or her social enterprise into a profitable business. And I hope she'll be sharing some insights with us today. And lastly, we have Etubi and Echeria, and I can see already, I don't have to tell you he's an artist. We can already see his, some of his artwork um, in his background. And Etubi is a visual artist, is a digital, anything arts, Etubi is your guy, right? So, um, yeah, okay, so I'll start with Dodos because she's first on my screen. Um, yeah, Dodos, so just in two minutes, just give, um, give us a background on your experience and yeah. Okay. Hi, hi everyone i'm super excited to be here like it's um it's amazing to be able to connect with such a large audience you know while in lockdown even if the lockdown has been lifted um so my name is dodos vegara and i'm a makeup artist and influencer on youtube and instagram so i'll just take you back uh, you know and just come up all the way to my experience so I have a BSc in HR from Crawford University. And right after my university days, I started my NYC, right? So in NYC, I already had a flair for, um, you know, creative things. I, I was very much drawn to fashion and beauty, you know, even as a child. So when I, you know, started my NYC year, I was like, okay, I have one year. Um, however, I mean, I was working, I had a nine to five job in HR. Um, for my NYC, so that was my PPA. But however, I was like, okay, this is the one year that things are not too serious. I can explore all the things that I want to explore. So the first thing I did was after like, I think three months, I'd saved up my Alawi and I used my um, Alawi basically to pay for makeup training. And so that's how I, you know, attended makeup school and got certified as, an, as a professional makeup artist. So I was doing that on the side. So on weekends, I'll do makeup jobs, you know, on, on weekdays, I'll go to the office. And then randomly, I was like, you know what, I really want to share more of my, because I find people asking me, oh, where do you get this hair from? Or what's this beauty technique? Or, you know, how do you do this? So I said, okay, you know what, it's time for me to start a blog. So I started my blog, IamDaughters.com. And I started my YouTube as well. Now, um, so I was doing these things on the side as I was doing my HR job, you know, HR nine to five job. And basically it, um, I did all of that HR up until 2015. And in September of 2015, at this point I had sort of grown, um, or I, I, yeah, my, my, my fan base and my followers and my work started to speak for itself and started to get a lot of recognition. So it got to the point where I was like, okay, you know what? I want to, I want to take the leap really and go, you know, full time into um, turning my passion into an actual business and into an actual livelihood, you know, means of livelihood. So I quit my job in 2015 and I started my makeup business. Um, so I, you know, rented a space and started to do makeup on people as well as, you know, for photo shoots, for weddings and all of that. Now, um, that's basically my experience and I've been doing um, makeup artistry and creating content on YouTube mainly since then up until now. Um, and to be honest, it's been, a, it's been a very, very amazing experience. No regrets whatsoever. If I go back, if I could go back in time, I'll still make the same decision that I made. But I would say that it was super important that I had that experience, you know, working as, um, working under someone, you know, and basically my HR experience helped me to, helps me still today to manage my business as an entrepreneur that has, you know, a staff strength of about 10 staff. So I feel like my experience from what I, um, from what I studied, actually, I made a mistake. I studied economics. That's how far gone I have forgotten what I actually studied. I studied economics, but I wanted to do HR. And so that's how I got a job in HR. 
So yes, all of that is still helping me today in my business and, you know, in everything that I'm doing. So yeah, that's the long and short of my experience. Okay, thank you so much. I'm very quickly, I'm going to do Olani Day. Hello, everyone. My name is Olamide. I'm the founder of Power Recycling, a social enterprise in Lagos that we model solid waste into sustainable eco-friendly products. Um, I started Power Recycling in 2016 officially. And um, I think it was just from a place of anger. I was angry about something. And then that was how Power Recycling came into existence. So now what happened, I, I, I did computer engineering at the university, so, and I worked for eight years before study, um, starting power recycling. Um, 2012, I had a meeting in Dubai, and I went into, you know, I love what they're called, I love creative stores. So I walked into this um, mall to buy some what they for my living room and all that. Then I got those three pieces from Dubai, got back to, Nigeria I had issues with customs, issues with, you know, a lot of things with the costing for bringing them in. And then I realized that they were made from waste. Now, that was the point where I got angry because they were quite expensive and I had a lot of issues with customs trying to clear them. It was at that point I realized that we have a lot of waste in Nigeria. We have that opportunity to make the same thing, you know, I went out there to buy. So that was how power recycling started. Now, um, when we started, you know, I, I did computer engineering, like I said, so I have an engineering background, but then my work basically were into um, more of technical sales, more of creative designs, if you know a bit about tech. And that kind of helped, but then I didn't have that, even though I did a bit of business development, you know, throughout the eight years, eight to five job, I didn't have that entrepreneurship experience of building a business, scaling a business, you know. And um, one of the things that helped was in that 2016 that we started, um, I applied for Tony and Umeli. So 45,000 people applied and 1,000 of us were selected. So I happened to be one of the 1,000 people. And it was at that point I learned a bit about entrepreneurship, learned about most importantly, storytelling, which I must confess has helped, you know, my journey so far. I know they've talked about it. I know Leap Africa would have taught you a lot about storytelling and how storytelling will help your life going forward, your business and everything. Tony and Meli gave me that foundation. So that kind of helped. Then from there, I think the same year, 2016, I won the Wimby's Impact Award for um, recycling then in Nigeria. So that has been a progression so far. We've, we've, we've done quite a lot. It's been like four years so far. So I think I should just stop there. Okay, thank you very much, um, Olavide. And very quickly, we're going to move to A2B before I um, start asking the main questions. Wow, so this is just intro. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> um, Good afternoon, guys. Good afternoon. Um, I hope everybody can hear me. Uh, yeah, so I'm a Tupi Onicheo. I'm a visual artist. I, I don't know, man. You guys have been so amazing. I don't even know like what I can compare to these great people that have just come before me, but um, let me try. You guys, um, I, uh, what I deal in is um, I storytelling. Thank God she talked about it. Like I deal in visual storytelling. Most times I'm about to, uh, I'm asked to, uh, you know, translate um, poems, which is, this is, that's why I put this, it's like, I haven't done actual painting in so long. And like, you guys asked, I was like, okay, this might be what I'm working on at the moment. And before I'm like talking about like um, where I'm from or whatnot. Um, I've been doing art for about, professionally for about 10 years. And um, the journey has been crazy, you know, it's, it's fun. It's fun. Like um, I, 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 you, you, you stress so much about your work, and then you start to learn that it's like, oh wow, I'm my my job is to have fun with ideas, and like, uh, oh, man, it's it's crazy. I enjoyed I enjoyed the work. Just coming up with um crazy concepts, and you know, you know, it's fun stuff. 
Thank you so much, Atubi. Thank you, everyone. That was that was on point. So what I heard from Dodos is that um, NYSC was a time to sort of explore. So even though she was interested in HR, she was also um, exploring her makeup artistry and just you know strengthening strengthening her hand, her hands and also her mind in terms of the business she wanted to um, develop. So um, we know that you're also a YouTuber. Um, we know that you're also a content creator and this, this is a new sort of a new sector, right? And um, I find that a lot of youth are kind of shying away from YouTubing or, and content creation, they don't really know how to go about it. They don't really know what it is. So can you sort of shed some light on um, what YouTubing is? What, what um, should I say, the, uh, what the career of a YouTuber is like? right and also yeah um, and what content creation is and how to go about it yeah okay great um so content creation is basically when you create content for brands it could be beauty brands or fashion brands or lifestyle brands in general so a brand says okay you know i make jewelry for instance and i need this jewelry to get to the right audience but i need um almost like a third party to help me advertise and reach my audience. So the brand reaches out to you to say, you know, can we do like paid promotion where you promote this product or you help me get this product to the right people and then I'll pay you X, Y, Z. So content creation is basically co creating content for brands or even for your own brand, right? So you can create content across multiple platforms on social media, from Instagram to Facebook, to YouTube. Now, I really create content on YouTube and Instagram. So the, you know, the basics of the story creating content on YouTube is I actually did not start off um, creating content really for money. I really started off because I really wanted to share. So the first thing you need to know is that if you want to go into YouTube, if you come with the mindset of I need to make money off YouTube, it might be a tough one for you psychologically because it doesn't take a while before it kicks in for you to actually make valuable money from YouTube because there's a lot of algorithm in there that you know you have to crack to understand that you know for me to get this amount of views, I need to have, you know, I need to have this amount of views where I can make this amount of money from YouTube. And so what I do is that I create content from the things that interest me, from things in my environment, um, from makeup videos to skincare videos. And what I do is that I share that on Instagram. Now, some of those partnerships are paid partnerships where brands are saying, I want you to talk about my products. I, want, I know that you have the following. I want you to basically reach the audience. Um, you know, and yes, so some of those are paid partnerships, but a lot of them is just me trying to help and, um, sort of like, um, yeah, basically help in need, if you know what I mean. So if you're coming into YouTube, you want to come into YouTube knowing that, why would people watch my videos? Why would people click on my videos? If you come in with the mindset of, I'm trying to help, I'm trying to you know, solve a problem, then it'll be easier for you to create content around that. And with that, naturally, you will get the kind of engagement that you're looking for because you're always thinking as a subscriber, what do people come to YouTube to search? People are coming to search, uh, oh, how to cook banga rice or something, for instance. So you, as a content creator, you are thinking, this is what people are searching. And so because of that, I'm going to make sure that I tag my videos. My SEO optimization is going to be on point so that when people search for those things, I will be found. So there's a lot of like back-end stuff that happens and a lot of algorithm that you have to understand for you to actually hit those numbers. Um, yes. I hope I've sort of like touched on it briefly yeah so you really say. have you really have and you made one key um point where you said content creation is simply sharing yeah. and um so this that's excellent it's it reminds me because there's so many things that we want to know how to how to make i learned yeah. how to how to do makeup on youtube i've never for once attended a, um, a makeup class and gradually i've been able to you know develop my skills in it yeah. hair you can learn how to make hair you can learn how to tie a gilly cook anything lately what i what i watched was um someone who was um who has some kind of device that figures out what um a real diamond who is wearing a real diamond and who's not 
And that is content because it was very entertaining. So people are also looking for entertainment. So content creation is not just, you know, from um, fashion to uh, cooking. It's anything, really, anything you feel you want to share. There are people who review movies. There are people who review um, shows, who review so many things, who review um, even clothes. You know, so whatever you feel you want to share, don't limit yourself to say, oh, I probably don't have enough to do it. Share it. Because one thing about YouTube is when you post up your content is actually what you even think from what I've heard is what you think will not blow that will actually blow. So you never know. Just learn, try to research more about it and, and yeah. it's something for you to consider. So I'm going to move next to um, Olami Day. And I like Olamide to, you know, shed some light on. So recycling is something that people are still are also trying to understand, right? And it's it's definitely a creative art. Um, if youth coppers were to venture into this, because there's waste all around us, how is this something that they can um, go into? Can you just briefly discuss what the pathway to entry into this would be? Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah. Um, the pathway to recycling. Now, what I do is upcycling. I do upcycling, actually. Um, waste management have a lot of sector and a lot of niche. So you, sorry, you... sorry, just a question. What's the difference between recycling and upcycling? Because that's often okay. confused. Yeah, confused. Okay, so recycling is when you take um, waste materials and then you convert them into something different completely different from what you know you took from it and sometimes and most times involves um, the use of chemical process and um, high tech technology so let's say you take a piece of um, um, nylon sachet like pure water can you see it and then you turn it to um, plastic chairs so most of these plastic chairs you see or um, what was this thing called St um, Fibers, you know, fibers and pillows are actually made most times from linens, discarded waste linens. So this is completely, you know, of the of the what the the raw materials was before you change them. Now, when you talk about upcycling, most times upcycling doesn't have to involve very high technology, even though it's green tech, but it doesn't it doesn't have to be very you know high. And then upcycling doesn't have to be um, it doesn't have to involve chemical process most times. So that, that's the difference between, you're still taking the same waste materials and then converting them into something useful, but it doesn't have to go through high tech or chemical process. Now, that's the difference between recycling and upcycling. So it depends on the, the sector or the niche you want to go into, but then the pathway into it is first. If you're considering going into recycling, you need to know what exactly you want to do and what exactly you want to achieve. Do you want to start with just picking up waste and then looking for people who can take it from you, more like offloaders, and then you sell to them and make money? Or you want to pick up this waste and then convert it, you want to go to the old value chain and turn it into something. Going to the old value chain, I don't think we have a lot of people doing that in Nigeria. And it's capital intensive. So most people who are starting, you know, with little capital, they have to maybe just pick it up first, sell to somebody or pick it up first, clean it and turn it to pellets before they can sell it out. Now for upcycling, upcycling doesn't really involve a lot of capital. So let's say with 10,000 Naira, you're good to go. You can start your first project, make your money back, make times two of your money and keep, you know, working to turn over your, 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 your revenue. So they are quite different. Now the pathway to it first is that, I, I think the first thing is you have to be passionate, which is more like the pathway to anything in life. You need to have passion for what you do. Um, I read I read a book where they say talent is not enough. It's the same thing in almost everything you do in life. You have the talent, you have the skills, you need skills, you need talent, right? You need to also know the rudiment of what you want to go into. But most important importantly, you need to have, be passionate about it. First, entrepreneurship is not a smooth journey. You will get tired, you get pissed, you get frustrated. So you need to have something that is driving you. So one of the things I ask people most times while I speak is this. 
every time you wake up, ask yourself, why, um, what will I do if I'm not afraid? What exactly will I do if I'm not afraid? You need to understand what is driving you. If it's profit that, we, that is driving you, you'll get frustrated very early in life. And then you might likely drop it. So you see a lot of people doing like 10, 15 businesses because it's not just coming together. It will come together at the beginning. You do not expect it to come together. It's going to start forming later on in life, right? Um, first thing, you have to be passionate about it. Second thing, you need to know what exactly you want to achieve from this recycling you want to do. What do you want to achieve? Are you trying to make impact? Are you trying to make money? Because in knowing what you want to achieve, it's going to help you to tell your story. And in telling your story, we determine how far you will go in the business. Telling your story. I've seen people who started the same thing I do and they're just still trying to struggle. And then I've seen our passion and maybe knowing why I started Pearl Recycling has actually helped me move fast. So you need that. Um, capital is the last thing. I tell people, cap fund is not a problem. I don't know if Pearl is, if um, if Africa told you that. Fund is not a problem. I have to say funding, capital, capital is not a problem. If you know how to put together your story, investors will call. People will believe in your vision. So first, you have to be passionate. Second thing, you need to know why you're doing it. And the third thing, you need to um, understand um, what now. Maybe your target market, just the normal entry point into normal business. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Olamide. That was very, very, very helpful. And I like that you say capital is not a problem because there are so many options. When, when you hear capital, a lot of people think, the first thing they think is, oh, money. But then they don't think about their social networks. They don't think about their intellect, intellectual um, capacity, you know, capital is not just money. And also another thing is explore, have that willingness to explore, you know, research, do a lot of research. Researching doesn't take anything. You don't spend anything for you to research, right? There's so much information on Google. Now that you've heard about recy um, recycling and upcycling, it's something you should still go back and research, look at um, um, the, the community of people that are are currently um, recycling in Nigeria and see the amazing work that they are doing. Lagos is an excellent opportunity. There's waste all over, and this is not shade. I am not throwing shade at Lagosians, but there is um, waste literally all over. It's not something that um, is hard to find. So I know we have just about seven minutes left. I'm going to move really quickly to it to be. And it to be, I want you to shed light on, you know, as an artist, a lot of people do art um, because they, they have the potential to do it, right? Because they are artists at heart. But then they don't even know that there's actually a large market to sell. A lot of people come from all around the world, especially during Art ex exhibition. They come from all over the, the, the world to buy art from African um, artists. So can you just tell us how, um, you, how it's possible to monetize your art or your skill? Okay, well, as um, I will tell you why I'm gonna ask me a tough question. <laughs> so, um, for for me, because of how large art is, it's a very large um field. There's so many things you can specialize in, and you don't have to do every job. That's what you you, you learn early. You don't have to do everything. You can specialize and just you know carve carve your niche and just keep pushing there because um the way the world is set up now there's so many as, as you guys have a lot of people have said there's so many ways to just put your stuff out there for people to see and come and say oh we want we want this we want that and it's like um the world is yours just you know show people what you're working on and they'll you there's most likely as far as you in yourself you know you're, you're, you're trying to do something amazing or trying to do something cool it's um it's most likely you find somebody else that is like-minded as well that would, um, you know, just, just really feel, feeling the vibe and it's just like, um, you know, just, you, you never know. You never know where your stuff goes because the randomness of algorithms are just on their own. You never know where your stuff goes. Um, about like, but for me personally, how I've, I, I don't have to explain it, I've been very lucky that I just, um, even like in terms of support for my family, everybody's just like, oh, uh, my dad told me that um, you, um, you, yeah, I, I've seen your I've seen your math scores. They are not bad. I've seen your English. Is not is yeah, yeah, you, you're passing these courses. You're not failing, but um you see this art. You you, you can do it, you can do it seems like you can do it when you're sleeping. So it's like um 
go and do that. And it's, it's crazy when you have that kind of support is, man, I, I don't know, man, it's limitless. So, but then also you have to, uh, there's, there's a lot of things people don't think about is the nitty gritty. You're gonna, there's a lot of work that has to be done just to even reach a certain level of even, uh, you know, being good enough to say, oh, no, look, man, nah, me, you can't, uh, you can't pay me that. I'm sorry. Uh, like it, it, you have to know, you have to have confidence in your work, and that's that's something. Unfortunately, I learned late in my career. But yeah, it's a lot of things. It comes down to confidence and knowing what you're worth in terms of like charging, because everybody everybody wants art. Nobody knows how important art is until when they are. It's, it's time to oh, we need a, we need visuals for this. We don't want to just give them paper. As I look at these criminals. <laughs> uh, so yeah. Um, uh, yeah, this, that's that's basically it. Um, you wanna, if you wanna make money, know your worth. Compare and um, get your peers. Like I have a lot of artist friends that like work. I would consider like equals to me. So like I talk with them. I, I talk with them about like, um, oh, um, what are you charging now? Like look at my work. Like what do you think I can do that that can be better? You know, you just keep striving. Like don't. Um, that's oh wow. Uh, I don't wanna, but. That's my problem with like just um, things that um, artists as general now, especially Abuja, is nobody wants to keep pushing the the envelope. Nobody is just everybody just like okay, I know how to do this. How do you make it better? How do you like uh, listen? Like for me personally, what I always um, strive for is dynamics. So I'm always like saying, how can I post poses? Like I'm thinking about three dimensional spaces. Like I used to think about my work two dimensionally, like where it's just, oh, there's one thing in the middle, uh, you know, just keep things balanced. But as I think about it, it's 3D, you can make it, you can make it wider. And that's all it happened because I was talking with friends that make 3D. So, um, you know, just stay open, stay open and, you know, talk with people, reach out to anybody you think is doing work that's similar to yours. So they can also give you their experiences I think um, you'll be good. Thank you so much, Etubi. I, I really like this point that you made about um, joining communities because um, that will really take you far. You never really know. Sometimes you think, oh, this is the direction, in, this is the trend that is currently being set in, in either the art space or the makeup space or whatever creative space. But then um, when you have a community, then you have you have um, a larger audience to kind of tell you um, what you probably like what your next step should be or what um, the audience, what your target market are actually looking out for. Um, I also wanted to ask, I think um, for arts, social media does play a role, right? Posting up your pictures because we've seen so many artists that will, you know, just use like a bottle and then they've, I don't know, with some paints and they've already draw, um, painted something really <laughs> amazing, right? Um, yeah. And social media, and a lot of them have gotten so much recognition because they post their work on social media. So um, telling uh, youth core members or telling um, the youth in general that are interested in arts to post their work on social media, I believe is a good direction, would you say? Yeah, it's very good. Yeah, it's, um, I don't know how to, yeah. It's really good because yeah, you need you need eyes on your work, especially like for people like me that um, I'm strictly visual. I don't even paint normally. This is this is totally not what I do normally. I usually do digital art. That's like and I, that's why I love the fact just to show like, you, even though I told you like to specialize, you know, still find like other ways to you know express yourself because I learned so much from painting normally, painting traditionally like this, and also from doing digital stuff. So um, just. As I said before, man, stay open and yeah, share your stuff. As most likely, you will get tips. You know, just reach out to people that you think um, because you can also. That, that's the beautiful thing: you can get help, and you can um, still get money. <laughs> yeah. Awesome, awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you so much to every one of you. Um, we're actually right on time, I hope. Um, if you have, and do you have any last <laughs> words you might um, maybe burn in? comments you might want to um, put out there just before we round up this session and prepare for the next session. Um, uh, for Alamide. everybody, right? Or for yes. Me? Okay. No, between you, Alamide, okay. and others. Yeah. If you have any last okay. burning no um, yeah. um, I, I mean, I think that just real, real quick, um, 
for anyone out there who's trying to basically start either a YouTube channel or your, you know, just start creating content on YouTube or Instagram, it's super important that you maximize um, the time that we have. A lot of people are spending so much time on their phones, on YouTube. People are consuming so much content. And even for like, to be honest, like influencer marketing and um, content creation is the future of advertising. So now is a great time to start. People have so much time to watch and consume your content. And so it's time for you to basically move. And don't feel like you need to have it perfect. Start and learn on the go. You know, if you have a phone, you don't need to have an expensive camera. Stay in front of natural light. You don't need amazing, like you don't need big equipments to start. But um, I feel like this lockdown has really showed all of us that um, being virtual and doing things virtually is the future. So that's a market that you really, really need to get in. And there's still, I mean, the market is still not saturated in Nigeria. So I want to encourage every single one of you still doing your NYC to be comfortable and just ready and open to share a lot of, you know, your experiences online. People want to learn from your experiences and people want to tap into that. Okay, um, so I think what I, I would like to tell everyone is this. I don't know if they are all NYC, but I don't think so. I think we have people who have been doing amazing things here. Um, if you are just um, starting NYC or you are ending NYC, the first thing I will tell you is that at the point when I served in 2008, I did not know what I wanted to do in life. So if you are at this point in time where you are, you know, everything is not clear, the parts seems so rough you really don't understand it is perfect completely perfect you are not lost you're going to figure it out later on and you're going to figure it out as you move in life so just take it easy you are doing fine when you look at your journey and you compare it with maybe somebody who has already gotten their life figured out i can tell you perfectly you are doing better and you are doing well and if you've been in the business and you just really don't understand everything um, I tell people, I, I tell them that you can wake up anytime. That is not the problem. The only problem is when you wake up, don't go back to sleep. So even if you wake up at 76 years old or 40 or 50, it is perfect. But the problem is when you wake up, don't go back to sleep. Run with that vision you have. So if at this point everything is so muddy, not clear, you are doing fine. Don't rush your life. Don't stress yourself. Don't compare your journey with others. We have different journeys. You are going to get it and you're going to be fine later on. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank you so much, um, Alamide, for shedding light on that. Um, Etubi, do you have any last words? Or uh, yes, I do. Um, what I would say is just, um, well, it's back on the term of like knowing your value, knowing what you, what you're worth as a, as a, even as a person first, and then as a creative as well. Uh, yeah, yes, you're supposed to be your harshest critic. That's you yourself. You're supposed to look at your work earnestly and say, oh, wow, this is where I can improve. But at the same time, don't forget to praise yourself when you've done good work. Don't forget to praise yourself because it's, it can get very draining. You need, if, if nobody is tapping your back, if nobody's tapping your back, tap your own back because you say, they see you walk where they do. So, yeah. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you so much, guys. This has been an amazing session. Um, thank you so much for honoring the invitation. Um, um, we're really grateful. It's been, it's been a very inspiring, you know. I'm really excited that we were able to get um, different types of creatives and to also see that you have similar comments, you have similar experiences. I think it's going to, um, it's a lot of insights for our audience. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm going to be handing over to Daniel now for the digital session. Sorry, Tiwa, we took a bit of your time, but um, I'm sure we can make up for, for that uh, later on. Daniel, over to you. Thank you, um, Dodos. Thank you, Olamide. Thank you, Otubi, for that. You're your number one fan. You're creative. Keep doing your work. Keep being excellent. And that was very insightful. You can follow them on, online, follow them on Instagram. Dodos, I saw your Instagram page yesterday. Very amazing stock content you're pushing out there. You know, great job. Um, Olamide to Care Recycling and the rest. Uh, so, people, can you tell me on the chat box, are you digital?
Let me see, digital people, let me see you on the chat. Let me see you on the chat. Digital, let me see you, let me see you. Where are you, where are you? Where, where's the digital people now? Come on people, we have uh, about 50 something yet now. In the chat box, let me see you. We are the digital people. Okay, I, we are the creative people. Why is nobody talking on the chat? Let me see you on the chat. I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. Give me a second. I'm waiting. All right. Good afternoon, Mr. Tiwalala. How are you? You've been you've been you've been online since the beginning of this session. That was amazing. How are you doing? How's your how's your weekend going? I'm doing well. How are you doing, Daniel? Nice to be yeah. here. Yeah, good to have you. Good to have you. So um, we'll just start very quickly. You just first of all, you just tell me about what you do, and then then you share about what we're talking about today, the digital space. Then based on what you share and based on some of the questions you have, then we'll go from there. Is that fine? Yeah, that's fine. Um, but well, what, what, before I start, I think that I have a document to present. So once I'm about to get into that, I'll be able to share that. Yes, that's, that's fine. fine. Okay. Um, so thank you for um, having me. I think it's a, I, I don't take it for granted. It's a great privilege to um, join Leap Africa to do this. Um, your work inspires many of us. Um, and it's always nice to come across a lot of your projects um, that you guys do. So well done. Well done on, well done on this program as well. Um, my name is Tiwala Laolani Jr. Um, I'm the founder and the CEO for Dots Media House. So Dots Media House is basically um, a modern, a new age digital agency. Um, we count ourselves as an agency that is not restricted by brick and wall. Um, what we do majorly is to lend our services to global brands. So we help global brands to reach their audience and most especially to help them expand their reach. Um, we work for a couple of clients, and we have a couple of things we do with Africa as well. So um, it's, it's great to be here again. Um, at Dot Media House, one of the things that um, we also do is to, um, is to lead the front for influencer marketing. Um, so two years ago, we were, um, we, were, we were led to actually release the first ever influencer marketing report in Nigeria. Uh, which you can access at nigeriamreport.com. Um, then also in the last five years, we've been um, at the forefront of over 80% of the campaigns that go viral online, basically. Um, so that's about it. Awesome. All right, thank you. Thank you so much. So uh, um, you can share now. All right, people, I, I said earlier to comment, I didn't know that the chat box was um, disabled. That must have been an error. So just indicate, did you get that? Are you ready to learn about the digital pathway? You know, just indicate, I see Choma saying, oh, Choma has, um, um, uh, so while we wait for Tiwa to share his screen and share his presentation, just want to engage a, a bit on the chat. I see Stephen, Stephen said, ready. Um, tell me, tell me in the chat, what digital skill do you want to have? What digital skill do you think <laughs> you need to learn? So why are you presenting? Uh, you can present now. I used to okay, share this. Okay, that's good then. Okay. Um, All right, people, tell me in the chat what digital skill do you want to learn? 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 The pathway to entry is digital. Uh, that's a, that is one of the pathways to, to entry is digital. Who wants to tell me? I'm ready. Digital marketing. I see. Let me have two more, two more, two more. We don't have all the time. Mr. Lawrence is already waiting for the agriculture sector. Let's go, let's go, let's go. All right, I believe this slide is ready. So, um, Timo, in the next, say, 15, 20 minutes, you just share, then we'll just take some questions out about how we can better position and go. Over to you, sir, thank you. Okay, um, sorry, so I'm just trying to see that I can still see the chat box while I'm presenting this. Um, can, can everyone see my screen? Um, yes. Chat. Sorry about that. Okay. So, so, um, so again, um, it's nice to be here. Um, actually, can you see my screen now? Yes, please. We can. 
Okay. Um, so um, thanks for having me again. Um, I'm just here to actually take um, everyone through a short brief um, on your pathway to entry, digital marketing, basically. Um, I want to first commend everyone, um, all the NYSA coppers here, that um, I feel you being here, you being a part of this program already positions you um, for the future. So it's commendable to have, because generally a lot of young people um, are not um, pushed or prone to join programs like this. So if you're if you're on this program right now, I think it's commendable, you're on the right path and, and it's inspiring. Um, so the first thing, um, basically just to explain what digital is, what's the, um, the latest way to explain it? So digital is basically using digital channels, um, social media platforms um, to, to do anything. So you can use it to reach um, um, more people, you can use it for networking, you can use it to build a community, you can use it for marketing. Digital basically is just using digital channels to, um, to reach your goals, basically. Um, just to also be able to um, confirm how important digital is, um, I will share some data with you guys that um, explains um, where digital is coming from and where we are right now. So I've just used the last three um, years. So if you look at this data that I'm showing on the screen right now, you can see um, how the number of um, users, the number of people on, on online, on, in, on the internet, have grown from, has grown to 7.5 billion in January, in January of 2018. And looking at it to January 2020 this year, you can see where it has grown to 7.7 .7 billion people. And we have over 4.54 billion active users right now in 2020, by 2020. So what this tells you basically is how Digital is growing. Digital is becoming a big deal. Like um, we can't even argue how like important digital is right now to everything that we get involved with, both as businesses and as individuals. You get. Um, so I'm, I'm guessing that the kind of people I'm, I'm speaking to today, um, in, 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 out, out of all of you, are um, some set of people that um, want to take digital as a career and to build their digital skills individually so that they can use it for. Um, companies and get paid for it. So people like this will be social media managers, um, graphic designers, content creators, influencers, um, strategists, media buyers. So social media managers are basically people who manage um, social media platforms for brands. So it can be, for example, if we use Lip Africa, for example, someone manages their Instagram, Twitter, Facebook for them, and the person must be highly skilled in social media management to be able to get that kind of job. You get a graphic designer is someone that probably creates logos, creates graphics um, for any company or for themselves. You get um, content creators are people that create content for sometimes brands. Brands buy the content from them and use it for their social media or they create content for themselves as content creators who promote for brands. Um, influencers are also the same. Influencers amplify content. So a brand wants to reach millions of people and there are already this set of influencers that have high number of follower, followership. Um, what influencers do is that they take this brand's content and they're able to help them amplify it to um, their follower base, basically. Um, con content strategists are people also who come up with strategies. So you go online and you see some campaigns um, focused on reaching people. Different types of brands are doing different kinds of campaigns online. There are people called strategists that come up with this strategy actually to um, build this campaign. Um, for the brand and also media buyers, people that do sponsored ad, that do Google display advertising and all sort of um, media buying on digital, um, basically. And I know that there are also this other set of people that are probably going to become entrepreneurs. Because as you guys transition from NYC into employment or entrepreneurship, um, you would need, everybody generally needs digital skills. So I'm breaking down the set of people that are in the audience right now so that you can understand as we go on um, what parts is, imp is important for you. Um, so the other set of people in the audience are people that want to be entrepreneurs, like fashion designers, um, who, who probably does not have, they don't have the money to employ the services of digital skilled people and want to do it themselves so that you save money. So fashion designers will be able to like, say for example, you're a one-man business, you would be able to manage your social media yourself 
be able to do media buying yourself. As a matter of fact, be able to create your graphics yourself using Canva, using um, softwares like 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 Canvas, Canva. Um, interior designers, photographers, videographers, all this all this set of entrepreneurs all need digital skills to grow their business without having to actually spend any amount of money at all. Um, so um, for the so just to get into the conversation now. Um, our first focus will be to basically talk about um, how digital why digital marketing is the top three safest career paths to building stressless wealth, especially post um, post NYC. Um, so since 20, 2010, in the last ten years, um, it's, be, it's been become obvious that digital um, was becoming a force to reckon with. Basically, um, most businesses were starting to be aware of the reach that digital processes. Um, companies were starting to switch most of their marketing budget from traditional to digital. Um, some businesses and individuals could now even promote and reach a lot of people, you get, without having an office. So um, imagine, you are a, imagine you are a fashion designer, for example, and um, you, you are just about to start. The amount that you spend on getting an office, right, on running light for the office, on um, doing the interior for the office and all that, and even after you've put that, all that up, I promise you that, say for example, you have that office at Ikeja, Lagos, how many people can pass in front of your office to actually patronize you? So can you, can you be sure that one million people will be able to pass in front of your office to actually come into your shop and patronize you? Meanwhile, just having digital, having digital skills to manage your social media properly for your business as a fashion designer, where you don't even have a store, you can just have a warehouse in your house and all you're doing is marketing through online. Um, what that does is that you'll be able to reach over 10 million, 20 million people from inside your house just by having digital skills that can help you promote your business properly, that can help you reach this number of people. So that's what digital actually positions you for um, um, right now. Right. Um, all that growth that we have seen in that last 10 years um, has now brought about 29% of the world um, to be active on the internet, right? And what COVID-19 actually even confirmed, like with COVID-19 eating us in February, what it confirmed was we've been saying this whole thing about digital being the future all this while, but COVID-19 actually confirmed to us that digital is now because when you look at the lock during the lockdown, a lot of brands could not even do their traditional advertising. They couldn't do billboards. They couldn't do adverts on radio because everybody was under a lockdown. But one thing that was constant, right, was the use of digital. Everybody in their houses um, were all connected online. As a matter of fact, the active users on social media grew with about 15% um, during the whole lockdown and pan this whole pandemic going on. So what that explains to you basically is that um, Digital is now the number one medium to reach the largest number of people at a go. And that shows you why it is important um, for you to grow your digital skills, no matter what you're trying to do. If you're trying to get into employment, if you're trying to be an entrepreneur, any kind of, any kind of aspect of life you're trying to, digital skills are now a must have um, for you. Um, so basically, that's what it does. So it helps you to understand that aligning with digital as early as possible positions you for growth. It positions you to create wealth and for you to access opportunities, um, basically. Um, focus two would be um, what opportunities does the digital community offer? So um, the, the opportunities that you growing your digital skills will offer you, basically, every business now needs, um, every business now needs the services of a digital marketer. Um, there is basically no business, right, that does not want to have a social media presence. At Dot Media, for example, during this pandemic, we've had a lot of clients, a lot of new clients that were not taking digital seriously before. And immediately this eats, immediately the COVID-19 eats, it opened their eyes to faster and easier ways to deliver their marketing. So we have, for example, a client that um, owned a big um, boutique company down, like about 25 um, stores across Nigeria. And during this COVID-19, because nobody was going to walk into any store, everybody was at home and everything, we opened their eyes to close all their 25 shops, right, and now have a website, have an Instagram, have a Twitter, right, to market to followers. But imagine, the, which is not too late, but imagine they have started this three years ago, and they have been able to build a community of followers 
of about 25,000, 50,000 people, because they are a very big brand that, that has a lot of customers physically. So imagine they've been able to build this followership online, right? It would have been very easy. People are in their houses, they are going to just get on your social media, see a, 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 jewelry, a jewelry, see any outfit that they can buy, and then they can just purchase it and that's it. So the, what this COVID-19 did was that you opened their eyes, they closed all their 25 shops, they now have a website, they are now on online, and without any over, without minimum, with minimal overhead, no rent, no light, no, before they used to have 70 staff, now they have about five staff. And they are selling crazily because now they are reaching millions of people. Like how many people can they reach with their, with each store in each state? How many people are going to walk through their store? How many people are going to walk in and everything? So that's what, that's what, um, that's one of the opportunities it brings to you. Like as you're about to transition from NYSC, um, because every business that you might want to work for or every business you might want to get to get into, one of the skills that all the employers will look out for now would be your how, how much digital skills do you have? That's one. Another, another um, opportunity that he offers would be um, owning digital skills actually positions you to be competitive, right? To everybody that is even experienced. So you know how um, before now, most employers would say when they put out um, hiring, they will put out and say that um, they need someone with about three, five years experience. Meanwhile, we're just getting out of NYC. How many people can, how many people have experience, right, on one particular thing? So I will use a case study, a case study. So say for example, a business has a, a secretary and the secretary has been working there for eight years, right? And all the secretary does is the normal thing, send an email, welcomes the boss, takes in guests, all those kind of basic things, right? Now, if you were going to um, access that company or you're going to apply to that company and the company says that you have digital skills of um, being able to manage a social media page, being able to read data, being able to do comp competitive analysis of what the rival of the company is, is doing and what you guys can do better, you get. Um, being able to use Canva, that positions you, that now gives you an edge over someone that has eight years experience, right? And you would get that job with like 90% chances you would get that job over, over someone that had the experience. So that's what it basically um, positions you for. Like it, it makes you beat that algorithm of, oh, you must have three, five years. All you need now is a digital skill and then you're able to get into um, a lot of jobs. Um, also, um, the third um, opportunity I would cite would be access to pull up professions. So, um, we all know that most times you go to school, um, the courses that you study and uh, probably not what you want to um, go into. So for me, for example, I studied quantity surveying in the University of Lagos. Um, and as of my 200 level, I was already sure that um, I wasn't going to practice that, that I was going to um, um, be going to media basically. What media positions for you is that it makes you, it gives you access to pull up professions like I mentioned earlier, like being a graphic designer, being social media managers. Guess what? All these jobs gives you more earnings over a lot of entry levels in huge companies. So say for example, an entry level in the bank gets paid maybe around 150K, around 120K. Some social media managers get paid 150K, 180K, 200K, right? For just knowing how to handle Twitter, Instagram, I don't know if you understand, interns, interns at my company get paid even higher than interns at some banks, right? So this actually gives you access. I know graphic designers that get paid 50,000, 200,000, right? So all the skills, all the academic things you've learned in school, are they going to really bring you that much wealth compared to where the world is going to, into now, where digital is now very important. You get people that know how to do SEOs, people that know how to do sponsored ads and Google, they are all very expensive to get now. So if you are able to build your digital skills, this is what it positions you for. Um, so someone would ask that, yes. Just go ahead, just, so, just run okay. okay. Yes, so someone would ask that what are the barriers? Well, the barriers are not having any digital skill at all. That's one of the huge barriers that um, uh, you would lose out in this whole, whole thing. So, um, if, if at any stage you do not possess any digital at all, to be honest with you, like um, you are going to be irrelevant to, to where, the, where, where the world is going to, you will need to grow these digital skills basically. And also not evolving, not evolving in the sense that if you're already at this stage and you don't even have those skills, right? If you start to learn the skills, you have to be serious about it. You have to evolve as, more, as fast as possible because there are students 
younger ones that are already they are still in school and are getting paid already as a 20 level, 300 level for being social media managers, not going anywhere, just being in school and then being able to do all this. Um, so I'm going to just rush this a bit because um, I know that I'm losing out time. Um, some of the skills that you need to be that you need to have, right, to be relevant um, in this in this space would be so as you can see, um, necessary skills. Um, how do you adopt these skills and um, are these skills which professions are they um, important for? So you need the use of digital tools for everywhere you want to get a job, right, as a digit as anything digital, or if you want to be an entrepreneur, handling handling your own. Um, social media or handling your own digital marketing. You would need to know how to use digital tools like the social media platforms, the reporting tools, um, the, um, the ones you can use to set up, your, um, set up your, your posting and all that. So you need to have knowledge of using those tools. Um, how do you adopt a reading research? A lot of young people don't read anymore. Um, I'm still a bit guilty, guilty with that. But reading and research, right, is the fastest way to learn anything. So as I've said several about you growing your digital skills, YouTube, um, learning on Udemy, learning on Coursera is a great way for you to actually read and do research, right? And also practical training would help you. Um, they're important for email marketing, graphic designers, social media managers. Other skills are writing and editing skills, knowledge of data, analytics, basic design skills, which is necessary for graphic designers and people that are going to be doing email marketing. Right, best ways to also um, um, adopt these skills would be actually practical training, um, using these tools and practicing on it, and internship. A lot of young people also don't take internship seriously. So the fastest way, right, beyond reading and research is actually to look for a company doing exactly what you want to learn and going there to intern for about six months, about one year, right? That's the fastest way you're going to be able to work practically on some projects and grow your skills. Um, generally. Um, project management skills also and creativity. Everyone needs creativity. Once you're going into digital, uh, once you want to be um, good at digital marketing, you would need a level of creativity, right? Creativity is always in built, but reading and research can also help you to grow that and also doing internship. Um, internship. So to get started, um, whether you want to be an employee or an entrepreneur, um, what I would advise that would help you really to get is to intern in an agency as a um, explained earlier that fits into your dream. There's um, this program that Red, Red Media does called Red X. They help to grow different aspects of um, of, of, of roles in digital. So if you're able to access that, that would be great. Wild Fusion has a school that teaches that. Dot Media will take in um, interns every now and then to grow and train them. Um, it's very, very crucial for us to also help to grow NYC coppers. So that's also been a part of our growth all this well. Um, young people right. don't take mentorship seriously. So mentorship is very key to, um, to grow generally. So I think that's about it. So this is the last slide. Um, just to support um, everyone here as well, like I said, Dot Media takes um, NYC coppers. So if you um, would be interested in, um, um, in interning with us, actually send us a mail at office at dotmedia.com. Um, we would take about two people that will be able to intern with us. Then also visit nigeriamreport.com to read about our influencer marketing reports. Um, basically, and then you can also check out Trend Up um, that helps you to make money from the go. If you have over 1,500 followers, you can start working with brands. That's about it. Wow, that's awesome. I didn't know about that Trend Up. I think it's something very, very interesting. All right, yeah. people, a round of applause for, for, for Tiwa. That was very insightful. Um, last thing, come on, let me see them. Let me see them in the chat. Let me see them in the chat. My people, where are you? Where are you? Was the chat box? It's not disabled now. Awesome, awesome. So, Tiwa, thank you for that. That was very insightful. Yes. You know, about, about how people can, because I know the world is going digital. Uh, it's not just what you know, but how can you, you know, merge technology and what you know together, you know, in the workplace. So, you mentioned graphics, UI, UX, web design. And the interesting thing about these things is that everybody can learn it. <laughs> you can learn yes, it on exactly. YouTube. I learned graphic designing on, on just YouTube and mentorship, just learning from my roommates then. And now I'm, I, I, I'm making money from just doing graphics too. So, and that's the pathway to progress. You know, you don't have to necessarily, while you're looking for a job, these things can even bring you money. And it's very important that post start learning these things. Now, nowadays, anybody can be a graphic designer. Go and learn Canva. You know, if you have a phone in your hand, you can do amazing things. There's Canva online. You can create content. You can use your social media. Now, I just talk, talked about 
um, the trend up. Uh, many of us who have followers online start engaging, read the report, said, send him an email. He has promised, you know, to that there will be an opportunity for some people here to intern with them. So leverage digital. And interesting without about digital TY is that you can even do it from your home. You don't even have, have to be physical. Exactly. Uh, that, so that's what I was saying about um, us being a, a, a not a brick and wall agency. So we, we have yeah. staff working with us from all over the world. You can actually do your business and still be able to work for an agency and make serious money, right? You can do social media management for brands without having to go to their company. So that's what makes digital really productive and profitable. I'm very excited. Someone just said it's not even, you know, people just think that tech and digital is just coding and programming. All, There's uh, a lot of more, 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 more opportunities just there. Influence. Social media managers, like I said, are getting way paid than a lot of entry levels in banks. Just for handling Instagram and Twitter for a brand, mm -hmm. right? Just doing graphics three times a week mm -hmm. for it, like getting paid 200,000, 250,000. So definitely not coding. And just like, you have to also learn storytelling, right? How you tell those exactly. stories well. You know, storytelling is important. Simple designs on Canva, you know, graphic designing and all that. Even learning how to even do PowerPoint. You can even design things on PowerPoint, Microsoft exactly. Word, Excel. Learn about the Google, the Google Drive, and this thing, all these things are there. Just Google, just Google. I'm available. If you have any question around um, upskilling, you can send me a message or extend to a message. I'll be happy to help. Thank you, Tiwa, for that session. And that brings us to the end of the um, digital breakout session. Thank you, Tiwa. That was awesome. I really enjoyed that session. So the next session now will be the agriculture sector, and that will be the last session for today, and we close. But before that, I would like to do a very quick poll. Can you all see your screen? Can you, okay, you know what? I'll take that poll after, after um, Joy's session. So Joy is, our pro, is a programs coordinator at Leap Africa, all the way from the um, fine, beautiful city of Aquaibom. And she's going to be having the session with um, Lawrence Afere for agriculture. I think everybody should stay back for agriculture. I'm gonna stay back for agriculture. 